Once upon a time, two friends joined forces to bring you the best in horror entertainment. Brian from the north, Tim from the south, each bringing their own unique perspective to the horror community. Movie reviews, Blu-ray releases, beer pairings, games, and more. Welcome to your new home for horror. This is Civil Gore. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our Halloween Horror Nights 30 recap episode. This is the Civil Gore Podcast. I'm your host, Tim. And this is Brian. And boy, did we have a fun time. I think it was like two years in the making. So the buildup was extra special. I mean, not just because this was, uh, you know, Tim and I, uh, our return to the theme parks, essentially. Uh, definitely return to a big event. But also, we haven't gotten to see each other since, uh, I think it was like two years, right? It was, it was right, Kevin, yeah. Kevin's wedding. So, yeah. you know, we didn't get to see, we haven't seen each other. Usually we'll see each other at least once or twice a year through, uh, you know, one of the, either the coaster events or some other kind of event. And so this was, um, this was an extra treat because, of course, you know, we all, we, uh, we love to hang out. Uh, Julie and I love hanging out with Tim and his family. And so we, it was extra special. Um, you know, a lot of stress leading up to it. Uh, we were worried, you know, about obviously, you know, with the, the COVID situation, with possible hurricane, possible <laughs> one of us getting sick, one of us getting hurt. And we, we got a little bit of all of it leading up to it, but in terms of not COVID, but uh, just other things leading up to it, uh, which we'll go through. Uh, uh, Tim's daughter had a uh, had a. Uh, little bit of an accident kind of a thing which her um which actually kind of helped us in some ways kind of worked out in our favor we'll talk <laughs> about that worked yeah. out saving us having to deal with lockers <laughs> um but we'll go into all of that uh, so uh, the way we kind of have it is i figure we're going to do a recap of the trip um you know just so you guys get a whole feel of how her trip was then we're going to go into our reviews of the three attractions that are new to us i know some of them have been around over a year now but uh, they're new to us, so we'll go through those three. We're going to go through the delectable foods that we tried and uh, the the drinks that we had. We, we we forayed into the Blinky Cup for the first time this year. Yeah. And then we're going to go to what you guys are really waiting for, I'm sure, is our full house ranking and uh, scare zone ranking, basically the event rankings uh, that we always love to do. So, yeah, so I guess uh, we should start it off um, – uh, basically, so like Tim, you got now the difference is uh, Julie and I flew and Tim drove. So Tim, why why did you uh, let everyone know like how were you, what was your drive like getting there? Oh yeah, so we we went down on we left after work on Friday and drove to Brunswick, Georgia, which is kind of our uh, unofficial halfway mark. It's actually a little over halfway, which is why I like it. It's about six hours from here. Uh, five mm-hmm. and a half, six hours. And so it only leaves you like a three-hour trip in the morning to get to Orlando, which is what's nice about it. So we stayed at a nice little hotel down there. Uh, funny, Funnily enough, I had forgotten which hotel we had stayed in mm-hmm. back in 2018. And when we arrived, I instantly recognized it was the same hotel. I had accidentally booked it completely not knowing. Uh, well, isn't but, there also the sign when you get into town? It's like a billboard. It says, like, Georgia, the ho- home of Tim's halfway point. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but... So that was a yeah nice little trip, no traffic really. Uh, and then we got up the next morning early, and really, I mean, couldn't have timed it more perfect. I mean, we I think we showed up like only a few minutes after you guys had been there. Not yeah, very long. yeah, no, because we we had Julie and I were just had just I think changed into our because our, our rooms weren't ready, so we had just changed into our swimwear when you and you and Josh walked by, <laughs> and I was like, I was like Tim, Tim, so, so that, that was kind of yeah, it was it was kind of cool, and yeah, our our flight, I you know I had flown since since the pandemic, we flew out to California. Um, this is a little different, obviously going into um, Orlando, you know, uh, so but um, we actually are. Um, so I, I don't know, did I even tell you that? I don't remember if I told you, but like for the first time ever, like as we were going through security, I thought I usually have such a plan going through security. I usually take all my electronics. I put it in like a hip bag. So like Apple watch comes off phone. Everything goes into the hip bag. That's going to be electronic. And I throw it into the bin, take out my iPad and I have everything set. Like my iPad has like a little paper towel around it. So it goes into the bin without touching stuff, you know, cause you know, I mean, your shoes are in there and everything. So I had everything like time to a T. But what happened is they they kind of we got there and we kind of got put on a security line 
that was like that we like I thought we were gonna wait a little bit in the line, but they put us into a brand new line that opened, so we got kind of right up there. So all my plans in my head got a little rushed, and I thought I did everything perfect except two things. One, <laughs> I forgot to take my iPad out of my carry-on, so my bag got flagged and moved over. Um, which wasn't too bad, but then my regular suitcase got bad because I think it was because I pa- Julie thinks it's because I packed it so tight and packed all those like wipes, <laughs> packs of the, <laughs> the, the, the Clorox wipes. <laughs> so I think that might have registered something. So literally now we were going through, we, we everything was going great until now we had to like literally now they had to open my bag, and I'm standing there and so they had to open first my regular suitcase then my carry on so that got me all stressed. We finally got on. Um, you know, got through thing. We didn't have time to get any kind of coffee or anything because it was like the line. The only thing that there was a Dunkin' Donuts, and the line was probably about thirty people long. So Julie wouldn't even get her coffee. So we got on. We got on the plane. Thank God they they originally said they don't serve coffee, but they actually did. Um, there was a little miss. Um, they, I guess they didn't update their site, so she, Julie was able to get her coffee. And we got on the plane, and actually we got lucky because we had a three seat. Uh, row, but no one sat next to me. So we basically had the three seats to ourselves, to the two of us. So that worked out in our favor. So things were looking up right at that point. The the <laughs> the, the winds of of stress have changed. And um, the funny thing is, like, so I, I figured it's like, okay, it's usually a two and a half hour flight, but I guess they had uh, whatever direction or wind gust they picked up, basically gave us like a two hour and fifteen minute flight. I bear, I literally. The movie I picked was Malignant to watch, which uh, we'll probably discuss in our next regular episode a little bit because we yes. both, Tim and I both oh loved gosh. it. So I got to watch that. I watched that on the flight, and literally as we were, they were, we were taxiing. I was still finishing the last two minutes of it, <laughs> <laughs> so I had just got. That's how fast our flight was. So like everything was like ahead of schedule. We literally got to the Universal shuttle um, that we picked up the last time we went. I don't. I think we told you, Tim. We got lo- like we got lost. Um, we totally went around the entire terminal before we found the one desk we were two minutes from. If we would have just paid attention, this time we were all prepared. Julie had like a map of the airport lined up. We went down. We got off the plane. We didn't check anything. Took the little shuttle over. Walked down a flight of stairs. Boom! Right to the Universal desk. They had our stuff. Within five minutes, we we're ready to go. She's like, "Go out to the, um, go out to the, the you know, the row twenty-one, and the bustle. You know, that's where the bustle pick you up." I swear to God, it was like the scene in Meet the Fockers. Remember where like the, everything went right on his flight, like because <laughs> we walked out, and, and just as we stood there, after two minutes, we see the Universal bus like pull into the spot. We're like. Said, so, wow, this is really good. Except the one thing is that we didn't realize the bus like doesn't leave right away. So we bus waited like about a half hour. But the bus was air conditioned. We sat in the bus. We were looking up stuff. So we got yeah, like I said, we got to the hotel a few minutes before you. We checked in, um, and then we got ready. And then we we hit our pool day, which is now a tradition, I think, with Halloween Horror Nights. For, oh, the pool uh, day was wonderful. Yeah. So yeah. Hard Rock has a really nice pool. They got music blasting. They have a DJ. They have, you know, different little things. They'll do games for the kids, and they have a really nice and very expensive uh, wait. <laughs> uh, 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 servers will come around, and, and you can get food, which is awesome, and drinks. Our and server everything. rocked, by the way. She yes, was the servers were awesome. Oh my god, she was one of the best. Like, I mean, she was. We literally saw her running back and forth, and she basically told us, I guess she had like she was like double shifting. Because I guess she was like, uh, I have something, I have something with her car or something. I don't remember. Yeah. But um, I felt like she was so good. Like she was literally running through, and it was hot that day. And she was running back and forth, getting our orders, and she was like telling us little tricks to get with our good drinks and everything. I think, I think it was Stacy, right? Was her name? I don't know. I got to look it up. But the, either way, I mean, I, I I plan this week actually because I, I want to get that uh, to that guy at the 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 um. I want to send a little commendation to the one guy at the Leaky Cauldron and and this waitress at the Hard Rock, who like you know I think they went above and beyond to make us uh, happy with stuff. And we ha- oh boy did we have some drinks at, uh, at oh the pool my gosh. and some amazing food, but yeah. um, those drinks were insane. Like you got you had some cucumber thing right? Oh, it was giant. You could see it yeah. from across the entire pool. We, we acci- I don't know if we accidentally or kind of accidentally on purpose ordered the biggest drink they had, which is I want to like say this. the second one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was more accidentally on purpose to be yeah. honest. 
But uh, yeah, it was huge. It had three entire limes cut up in it. That's how big this freaking glass was. Yeah. Uh, so that was, that was a lot of fun. And uh, Brian, I'll have to tell you, I'll have to tell you about our pool experience after you guys oh left. right yes so because we'll you stayed that. a little bit longer so we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll have to cap this the trip off for that um so yeah so i guess after that you know we had a couple hours but the pool right it started to i guess there was little drizzles here and there but then i guess right as i was about to go on the, the water slide i didn't get i never got to go on it i realized this time um but it was okay because i was kind of trying to make sure we were kind of relaxing that day but i was going to go with uh joshua he wanted to go in the pool uh, the, the slide so he went uh we went up um and then they they closed it due to lightning i guess in the area uh which seems to be like a trend for halloween horror nights like right as the the day's ending like between four and six it seems like these storms come in in florida yeah. but um it was okay um we were fine he he didn't seem to mind he had gone on the slide a couple times i think by that point anyway so we just came back down uh they didn't close the pool i strangely but um they just closed that so we had a nice thing and and i gotta say they they did something different this time which was pretty unique i don't know if it was covid related or just some kind of possible customer survey response but now when you go remember when we walked in not only do you get a towel but you get a towel for your chair a specific chair towel that was very fancy yeah thing that covers your whole chair so when we had like we, we actually had the same area where um where we had the last time it was kind of funny it was like almost oh, such a duplicate of the that, it's like we reserved trip. it almost yeah yeah it was like they did it and they even took the volleyball net down for us to to relieve the temptation <laughs> of, of wanting to play volleyball it was rather weird it was like we were just reliving the the previous trip but but in a good way yeah oh yeah in, in a good way and even a better way because you guys got arrived without stress this time and you were yeah. like had it all planned so we all just got i mean we had just a great time at the pool it was gr- it's a great way i i really think we did it, the one way to do it that way is so good because you start off your vacation like like in such a good way you're just relaxed and we knew we had horror nights that night we we're gonna do a lot of walking a lot of you know a late night so what better way literally to sit by the pool like in an, in an amazing pool setting i mean it's a massive complex there uh, to just sit there and enjoy your, um, you know, enjoy your 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 afternoon before we have the the fun festivities. And of course, then we did go to uh, our first horror nights was that night. We had the express passes that night. Um, you know, and I, I will say the kid the kids handled it pretty well. I and mean, we got through you, me, and Julie got through all the houses that night, which was pretty impressive. I thought, and we were not going at a at a breakneck pace. No, yeah, the, so. Olivia took the kids back a little early, not too early, but no, they were troopers. They stayed through, and remember that was the night before we got the rent of the wheelchair for Anna. She was oh, yeah. walking through like with yeah. We should talk boot. about that. Yeah. So yeah, Anna had hurt her foot at recess shortly before the trip, and she'd gone to the doctor, and the doctor was basically like, "Well, you can, we can put you in a boot. There's not really anything we can do about it. You just have to let it heal, but." We were like, well, we're about to go to Universal. I mean, we're going to be walking for miles. And the doctor was like, yeah, yeah you know, she was kind of like, well, you know, it is what it is. It's not, I can't tell you not to go, yeah. but she really needs to rest it. So we decided to just, you know, we'll see how she does. And that first night, I mean, what is about after like an hour, she was like in pain and having to stop. Yeah. And she was just miserable. You could tell she was miserable. She's trying not to show it, but <clears throat> we knew after that first hour of Halloween Horror Nights, that she was not going to make it the rest of the trip unless we put her in a wheelchair or something and just wheeled her around, which is what we did. And we'll talk yeah. about that in a little bit. But, uh, yeah, so with the first house we went to was – we'll talk about the houses in depth when we get to our rankings. But the first house we went to was Beetlejuice because we thought that would be the tamest for the kids. And they handled that fairly well. Um, the second house, I believe, was uh, – did we do Bride? Or did we do Hill House next? I can't even remember. I, you know, it's like it's funny. It's a blur in the order we went in that I, night. I could probably piece it together. I feel like we pictures. did Bride next because I think that was our, our. We figured it would be our least, our second least scary house. And now at this point, Anna got to where she was really turned off by the noise because those houses are super loud. I mean, you got a lot of screaming, a lot of banging, a lot of you know big sound effects and. It was really starting to bother her, which surprised me because Joshua was handling the the scares okay. I mean, he was still a little bit on edge, but I was surprised that Anna was the first one to bow out of the haunts. Like she was like having none of it. I bet you it was more that it was a little bit of the noise, a little bit of her foot. 
Yeah, so it was like a combination of the two. So she kind of was like done with the haunts. Like after after three haunts, we did Bride, Beetlejuice, and Hill House, and then she was like done. And and Joshua was kind of getting to that point as well. So I think it, they just needed some time to warm up. But uh, we had, still had a great great time that night. And then like Brian said, after Olivia took the kids back to the hotel, we stayed for we we were only there till like eleven thirty though, and they didn't close yeah. till two. And we still got all ten houses in. I mean, this is with dragging kids around, not even really rushing to the houses. We did have express, but you know, the wake times were not terrible Saturday night. They, I don't, I didn't see any over what like forty five minutes was maybe the max I saw all night. Yeah, and I think at one point one hit an hour for maybe like ten minutes, and, and then, then like dropped. dropped back down. Yeah, it was crazy. We almost like. We almost could have got away with not having our express passes that night uh, easily. Um, now that would change on Sunday, <laughs> but yeah, we'll, which we'll... Sunday? Well, yeah, Sunday was weird because Sunday seemed to be more crowded than than uh, uh, Saturday. It was is... much more crowded. Sunday it seemed like everything shifted a day. It was very odd. Yeah, but um, it it was kind of fun because at one point you know we did do the parent swap on I think it was icons right that was the one that you yeah. went back in with Olivia and then yeah and like Julie and I watched uh, the kids and that was funny though because that I mean we'll get into this more in the, how good this scare zone was but that was it was really fun because we were kind of stopped uh, we were in the um, the uh, seek and destroy scare zone which is kind of like this alien takeover kind of deal and the kid like just like the last time the scare zone actors do such a great job with the kids they really do like they keep like they were coming up and like fist bumping uh joshua and anna yeah. and, like they would go pose with pictures for them and they just made it really a fun thing and we'll get into like i said we'll get into more of that when we actually go through our scare zone thing but so it really made the wait and it felt like you guys were gone for like 10 minutes like it, that's how fast it went because we were just kind of hanging out in front of the the tribute store uh, oh, which, which, you know, we didn't put, I didn't put that on there, but we should probably mention that. Um, what a great store that was. I mean, that was like, it was like three or four, like giant rooms of, 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 of merchandise and snacks and just, oh, like, it, was, it was really cool. It, it was fun yeah. just to walk around and even if you didn't buy anything, which I did end up buying a, a shirt in there, but it was really well done compared to when we went in 2018 where the stores were just basically just kind of generic. I mean, this yeah. was themed. Every room was themed. There was different interesting things to look at in every room. You can go on YouTube and see the, the walkthroughs that people have done of it, but it, it was really, really cool. I really like the tribute store. Both of the tribute stores. There's one in islands as well. It's a little smaller, actually much smaller. Yeah. yeah that was much more. And actually it didn't look so big. When we watched it on uh, uh, that, that uh, great YouTube channel, uh, super enthused. Um, she, she was, she was going through it. I don't know if it was that, well, she might've went on an off day too. I think she went in during the day on a, a, like a preview day when it had just opened, like she didn't even expect it. So I think it probably, a lot of people didn't know where it is. Cause it's kind of tucked away in like the lost continent section. So I don't think if you knew to look for it, you might even walk past it. I mean, so it's not really that big. She just made it look much bigger when she was doing it. So that it was a little tight fit. And we had a wheelchair that day. And then there was also a sh couple of strollers in there. So that was a, a tough one to walk through, but it still got some great stuff. Most of the stuff you'll find at the other place, but there was a lot more like decorative stuff and some jewelry that you might find in there amanda you know she goes by living dead girl 87 on twitter uh we follow her she's got some really good content she's a lot of she has a youtube channel about books she i asked her if she saw that store and she said yep she went in there and spent way too much money <laughs> so, <laughs> yep. i could have so done that like, if i had not been with the you know, the family and had not yep. already spent so much money on the trip <laughs> Yeah, you know, and I didn't, I did not buy, like, last time I bought, like, eight shirts. This time I just bought the one shirt because I felt like while there was a ton, like, the store itself was amazing, I felt like a lot of the stuff, was, the shirts themselves weren't as dynamic as they as they were that first year I went. I, we went, you know, I don't know. So I, I just picked, I decided to pick one shirt that I really wanted, and I figured I'd get that. Because this time I spent a lot more money on, like, on the, the, the food items there, which we'll get into, um, and the drinks, which were were like the two drinks that we kept alternating with were phenomenal and definitely not strong in terms of alcohol because I was going, we were going through them fast and I didn't yeah. feel like I had any alcohol, but it's okay. Cause they were delicious. But um, yeah, so then we, we went to, um, went through all the, pretty much all through the houses that night. And like I said, we'll go through the houses in detail and what we liked about them um, in our rankings. But um, I felt like it was like when we were done, I mean, we were tired that night, but I was like, it, it felt like, it was a pretty easy 
evening to hit all the houses on a Saturday night, which I thought would be nearly impossible even with the express pass. Yeah. And I mean, the one thing that different is where I will say, like, you want to cut out walking, you do the RIP tour because, you know, you just kind of like, I mean, it's like literally the worst part was when you were done with the house walking back from oh there my to gosh, the front because yes. a lot of them converged. And, yeah. you know, most people was good were good wearing masks once they got into the haunt, which was pretty good. And I will say about the haunts, it's, you know, they did the protective screens. As much as I, I, I am for it because I would hate for a scare actor who literally faces thousands and thousands of people a night to be exposed to something, you know, especially because they're screaming. Some people are screaming at you, you know, which is the best way to expel any kind of thing. It kind of you can kind of get the scares were kind of tipped off. Like you could kind of see where there was a scare door or, or a, you yeah. know, one of those. Yeah, like, I don't. I don't think literally between. Well, which it was two two reasons for me. It was the the plexiglass you could see. I mean, you could see the reflection of it. You could tell where the boo holes were going to be. And then the other thing was right. kind of a lot of times like having to wheel Anna through it and having to be real careful about where I was going and, and paying more attention to that. I don't think I got any real genuine scares in any of the houses this year. Not, yeah, the, I don't it's think not I really that one. Yeah. It's not really the house's fault. It's just that you, you could just see everything coming. It didn't, it did not detract from my enjoyment. Cause I love, I go for the theming and, right. and the here. settings. That's and the stuff. thing. Yeah. To me, I could go through 15 houses not get one startle, and I'm I had the best time because that's not what like I'm like Tim. I go for the the creativity, for the ambiance of the house, for the the, the little tricks that they might try and pull on you, and, and you know, and of course the theming, which Universal does better than anybody, and it was yeah. So it's like you could kind of see it. I think the one thing that kind of semi startled me was an accident. I think it was it was another guest like bumped into the door uh, to a wall or something and like slammed it. <laughs> and it startled me because it was like I think I thought I was gonna like that thing the wall was gonna like like kind of like it kind of kind of like moved the wall like into me. It was one of those weird things where there was stuff hanging, and I think I got like so I didn't expect it to hit me. <laughs> I think that's what. So I don't know if you count that even as a startle, but um, and you know, but I I, I see why they do. It. It's funny the the them wearing the masks didn't bother me at all because I'm so used to seeing people wear masks. In general, now that's just for the last two years. You expect to see a mask yeah, on the face. That didn't so, bother me, and, and a lot of a lot yeah. of them had full cover masks too. That you didn't. Right. It wasn't like an actual cloth mask or anything. I mean, they had actual monster mask on, so they didn't have to wear like a cloth mask over that. So it did. Yeah, that that piece didn't bother me at all. Really, uh, right. it was the uh, the only yeah the biggest attraction was the plexiglass, which I kind of knew going in was could be a problem, um, and it. And it was. It, it took away from the scares. I'm not going to lie. But there again, I, I totally 100% for it to protect the scare actors. I had no problem with it at all. And, you know, so just just be aware that you, your, your scares are going to be slightly less because you can see things coming. But uh, it, it was. They still did a great job, though. All for them to pull things. this event off as close to normal as they did under these circumstances is pretty amazing to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and you know, some the scare actors you could tell were had to had an extra challenge to really startle you. And some of them actually, I have to say, some of them used the plexiglass in their favor by slamming against it, right? Which yeah. made an extra like a sound that like you maybe not expecting, you know. And you know, and, and, and just overall, it was like, and maybe that's why they cranked the sound up because I don't remember. I mean, I remember like certain ones being really loud, but I don't like some of them were like. Ex- excessively loud this year I, yeah but, i didn't remember them being like that i mean i remember we made a comment to each other like one night i don't know if it was after night two that we were kind of like done with the noise i kind of felt <laughs> i felt like what anna was experiencing i was like yeah. yeah i'm having a great time don't get me wrong but the incessant loudness not only in the houses but in the scare zones at some point you're just like oh my god i just want some peace yeah. and quiet yeah, and it doesn't help. We're staying literally at the Hard Rock, which is wait, at <laughs> six in the morning is playing blasting music in the lobby. Like it's that's its signature yeah. thing is that you're always going to hear music. So it's like we literally got there was not one moment of quiet on this <laughs> no. trip. <laughs> so but, uh, let's go to day two. So day two we went to. Um, I think we decided to hit Islands of Adventure was going to be our um, our go-to because we wanted to ride, ride Hagrid's uh, motorbike adventure. We wanted to ride Velocicoaster, of course. Yeah. But we had to be back, so we wanted to do it early because we wanted to be. Ba- we had to be back for the stay and scream that night. 
But um, I think we started off with a cool thing. So we used the um, I used the Voodoo Donut, uh, at, well the app on Universal site to order us the uh, the food, which I have to say works great. I wish every single restaurant in Universal adapted it because like as we were walking over. I was literally placing the order for this thing. We got over there. Tim, you guys were a little behind us. So it was great because right when you guys met us, I had like you know, like two nice hot coffees for you, a box oh, it was of donuts. Awesome. It, was, yeah. it was great. And when we walked in there, literally we had to wait like five minutes for them to make the coffee because they wanted the coffee fresh. So they literally, like the donuts were there. And they said, okay, you how many coffees do you have? Or like three because Julie and I split ours. They're like, okay. Hang on two seconds. Cause, and that makes sense because you don't want to – you know, if some people like coffee hot, you know, they don't want to make the coffee before you're standing there because most of the time it could cool down. You know, the Florida, everything's air conditioning. You leave a coffee out there for two minutes in an air conditioning thing, it's like back to – it's like almost an iced coffee. So it was great. But I think the funniest thing was that um, – so I texted Tim that morning. I'm like, okay, give me your order. I'm going to place it. Um, and so Tim's first thing was – Anna wants dirt because that's the name of the uh, donut, which is like a, you know, I think it was like a vanilla uh, icing with like a bunch of uh, what Oreos on there and make it look like. Dirt oh, yeah, yeah. On there. Yeah. So and I, I had the black and white, uh, almost like a black and white cookie, but it's a black and white on a on a cake donut. And it was they, in, in honor of the bride of Frankenstein. It was like their specialty one. I think what you, you and Joshua got the maple, right? Olivia got uh, the mango tango or something, right? And Julia got yeah. Julie got I think the Bavarian cream. I got the maple. Kind of yeah, I got the maple for sure. Yeah, they, they were good. Voodoo donuts always good. And we're smart. I think last time I think I got a couple of donuts, and I remembered how big they are, so I got the one. And the funniest thing is, when we were in there, there was a woman going, "Oh my God!" She goes, "Why I wish I would have known they were so big? I got two for everybody." I'm like, "Yeah, we did <laughs> yeah. last year." Yep, uh, you live and learn. Yeah, and that was definitely not the the first of. Of several sweets we had in the day which we'll go into like the more description uh later but we did do islands uh we did uh went on uh we got to uh went to hagrid's minimal weight on that i think what was it it would said like 35 but it was really like 20 it's pretty yeah quick, right? i will say the whole trip every ride was i think the longest you know they they might get to 20 minutes that's without express yeah. um i think the longest we waited for anything was velocicoaster we waited about 35 minutes for that and, but yet it said like 55 to 60. It was fluttering yeah. around. Yeah, the, which the is times not were the not case. accurate. So we were getting in faster. I mean, for the rest of the trip, it was pretty much walk on, wouldn't you say? Yeah. For almost everything. Well, yeah. I mean, we had Express, but even without it, there were times where we're like, it was so funny. I felt like just we were using Express because we had it. You yeah, know, it, was stu- like, it was stupid. The, the regular line would be empty, and we'd use Express and just go through the Express line because we had it. And why, I mean, yeah, why I mean, not? But it was almost pointless because you could just walk on either way. Yeah, and of course, yeah. Just to, to, to make a note, the uh, we don't have the Express is not available for Velocicoaster or Hagrid, uh, so those you know those you kind of wait in the regular line right now. But both of those queues are, are pretty fast moving queues, and they're actually quite entertaining. Especially the Velocicoaster had one of my favorite queues I've ever been in in a coaster, because and we'll go into that in the review. But um, it was just so that that made it go really really fast. So then I think we, we left the islands about middle of the day because we wanted to head over back over to the uh, to Universal Florida to get um, to get uh, you know get there for the stay and scream, which we totally botched in terms of what we wanted to do, but it didn't matter anyway because at that point it was all we had gotten through all the houses and we were only planning to pick three houses. We wanted the three houses. Uh, Olivia said pick the three best houses. That you guys saw last night, and those are the ones we'll hit, and we hit those with no problem. Really minimal weight on the regular line, and yeah. you know, I think that's only that. I think the first year we were there, we waited on trick or treat because it was twenty minutes. We waited on the regular line. This was the first time we actually waited in regular lines for the the houses that Sunday night, um, and they they really weren't that bad. We met my cousin uh, at that point, but um, what I was gonna say is before we got there, we uh, made a little stop at uh, Toothsome's Chocolate Emporium, which was something oh we missed gosh. the last time. <laughs> And we'll go into that in our little food section coming up, but um, that is definitely worth a stop if you want a sugar rush. Like, Ooh, I mean, man, yeah. wow. I mean, I, was, I think I still have my sugar rush from it going. <laughs> but um, then, so then we did the uh, stay and scream that night. We did the re- we did. Um, I think we did like four houses that night, right? We ended up doing a couple of extra. Yeah, well, Anna changed her mind. We've got her. We we brought some earplugs this time so that she could kind of dampen the noise from the houses and that just changed her whole attitude and she absolutely loved them after that and uh joshua was a little bit more into it so 
the kids got actually through a lot of houses on Sunday night that they did not go through on Saturday night. So they were having yeah. a really good time Sunday night. Yeah, no, that was really good um, with that. And then, so, oh, yeah, so then day three and night three. So this is the first day we had with all full day without any kind of horror um, nights kind of thing. So we decided to spend most of that. That was going to be our, like, uh, water ride, Island Adventure Day. And thank God because we got, it was like, Something like 8 in the morning, it felt like it was like 95 degrees yeah, already. it was a hot day. It was brutal. So we packed ready. We brought the flip-flops to switch into because um, just – I know this isn't a uh, – we're not going to probably discuss this because it's not one of the newer rides. But let me tell you again, Universal uh, is Toon Lagoon area. They find – they have like go out of their way to get you wet. We went on – uh, build wrap barges because uh, jo- I think Josh was a little nervous. It's funny because he went on it last time, but he was a little nervous this time to go on Dudley Do Right. Yeah, and which is fine because like you know I've been on that a bunch of times. We've all been on it. So, but they did want to go. We want. We, I'm like I don't care which one it is. I just want to get drenched. And <laughs> yeah, build wrap barges. So yeah, build wrap barges. I've never been on. It's by far I think it's my favorite overall rapids ride because it does exactly what it's supposed to do. Is get everybody drank no one survives that dry it's impossible like literally tim like thought he was gonna get away and then like that like one like spout like just literally poured water on your head <laughs> oh you will get wet on that ride no question if you don't yeah, get wet i, I was the, the rapids, first right yeah you'll you'll get hit you either get hit by a waterfall you're gonna hit by rapids and if you if you somehow manage to dodge all that you've got those spitting things up the ramp you go up yeah. this ramp that these spitting things will nail you so yeah, yeah, I got the. I think I was the first one, and I was like, normally I'll try and like scooch it away because like I don't want the cold water on me. I was just like, bring it, and I'm like, this thing hit me, and had the whole boat's hysterical laughing, and I was like, yes, I'm <laughs> so happy. I was so drenched, and like Julie got drenched too. Anna, I think, was she was next to us, so she kind of got the residual, but then she got hit that second one pretty bad and then, i got directly um, direct hit under a waterfall so yeah you guys I and i remember done. your reaction like oh god really like because it was like just pouring water and it's it's <laughs> usually those rides will do a trick where it stops right before you go under it this one does not no, stop. it does not stop ever yeah ever. it pours on you which that is great fun. yeah so then we went to uh we went to cowfish for dinner when we we're done which is is another like tradition i think for this thing which is one of my favorite restaurants and we had an amazing meal which we'll go into uh a little bit later on that. And then we did um, some mini golf, which, again, I actually didn't put as a separate thing. So we could discuss that now. Which So had I've been there before. I've done both courses. So this was your first time there. So tell, I want to hear your reaction to what you thought of this really cool golf course. Oh, yeah. It was super cool. It was the first, like, truly, you know, you see haunted mini golf courses on, like, video games. But this is the first one I've ever actually played in real life. But uh, it was super cool because the... Um, it really the holes are designed very much like a video game uh, mini golf. It's not like your traditional like more straightforward jungle golfs or your straightforward uh, putt putts or anything like that. It, it was actually has some like neat tricks to it. Like for the, like there was one that had like this um, this fountain with different faces on it that oh, would rotate. God, that one. And yeah. depending on which face was facing you when your ball went into the fountain, depended on which hole it came out of on the other side. So there was an optimal face to wait for to to knock it in. Um, Did either uh, none of us figured that one out, right? We all no, I don't think we none of us one. got it. And then there was it's just all kinds of cool little things like that. I mean, little tricks to the holes and stuff that I thought was really really cool. And then at the end, there's a great. Uh, like laboratory and then you're you shoot your ball in and it goes through this whole machine that takes like five minutes to get your ball <laughs> ball out that I travels through like this whole show rube goldberg contraptions it's really really cool my only regret about the mini golf is because of the weather they had closed it temporarily which means there a kind of a queue had built up of people yeah. waiting so we kind of felt rushed the entire time because we had people behind us and we had obviously a large group so that's my only regret about the mini golf is we really couldn't relax and enjoy it because we were kind of r- being rushed by the people behind us, but it, it was still a lot of fun and I would definitely do it again. I would I'd love to try the other side of the course, the sci-fi themed one. Yeah. Yeah. That one's a cool, that's one's pretty cool too. And what, what I love, one of my, what I was so excited to do again was, and it's funny cause Anna kind of helped us. She was in the thing they give you on your, your golf cart. Apparently there's, they're randomized things. So each hole has things on it. 
like little like, trivia pieces, but they give you about each each uh, scorecard picks like a random like five or six of them. So you have to look like it'll be like oh how on hole seven how many aliens are hiding in the trees. So you have to pick that out. So there's a thing, and if you hand it in, I guess you get um, get some scratch offs to get uh, money. And then my cousin, we ran into them again um, there, uh, and they uh, gave us a twenty percent coupon. So we had a little deal there, and you could buy like your own like custom like mini golf balls, some that glow in the like my cousin. I don't know. Did you see? She had the uh, my cousin Haley had the glow in the dark uh, one that was like oh that would, cool like, uh, flash. Yeah, so she bought a special uh, golf ball from there. It was just it's just a cool thing. But yeah, that would have been the only thing. I said because we felt like there was like a, a group right in front of us and a group right behind us. And so, yeah, there was a little bit of rushness, and there's six of us, so, you know, and, you know, of course, with Anna, kids, we had yeah. the chair. And, <laughs> and they have yeah. this hobbling around. Yeah. But, I mean, I think the thing we did all did pretty good. I think, like, everyone had five. I think everyone had got at least one hole in one, too. That was the thing. It was like we all, uh, it was just a really fun uh, course. It was a good way to, a good different, uh, you know, change of pace, because the parks closed early at that point, so it was, like, the perfect thing. I One thing I regret we didn't do is that if we, we totally should have saw and tried to figure this out, is that that when we were waiting, I, we happened to be looking at the the movie theater there, and Creature from the Black Lagoon was like playing on one of the screens there. And of course, we know that's Tim's favorite movie. That would have been something cool to see as a Universal monster. Oh, movie that would be awesome! A big screen yeah. In there. But it's just we we didn't know. I I just assumed it was still like first run movies there. I had no idea that they were gonna have something like that playing there, which was cool. But um, then we had our final day was uh, day four, which we just kind of spent most of the day in, uh, you know, Universal Florida. Um, or no, actually, we went to – did we go to Islands? No, no, that was just more Universal Florida. And, we yeah, we had the – you know, we just kind of went through the, the remaining attractions we hadn't gone to, uh, which includes uh, Tim and I getting our Woody Woodpecker credit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> our coaster. Um, we saw the, the amazing show, which we'll talk about in a moment, the Born Stuntacular um we had we had a nice lunch to kind of finish the day off at the leaky cauldron which um which i want to say that yeah because that's not really its own section there but what it was cool because when we got in there i forgot the way that um that restaurant kind of operates where there's like this one long table in the center and little side tables but you know during times of covid you know i didn't really i i yeah i'm not really comfortable necessarily eating inside that was the only place we actually ate inside mm -hmm, even yeah. cowfish we had an outdoor section yeah so i was a little hesitant but i'm like if we get off to the side it won't be so bad and i forgot that uh, it was like literally and we saw like little f other f families on top of families with really no spaces so i was a little f freaked out admittedly and so I'm like, is there any side table we can kind of get? And the guy, uh, I think his name was Michael. I, I wrote it down somewhere. And he was like, well, I can see, but I'm not sure. I can he goes, let me ask someone. So he went to ask someone, and add, my my keen eye was uh, because I'm I'm just I, this I inherited from my mom this like tactic of trying to get s special service where you may not deserve it, <laughs> you know, like because we were just like everybody else in there. There was no reason for us to be any special, but um, and I spotted a six spot right in between these two giant stone columns. So it was almost like we had our own little section, even though there was a full table behind us, but really it was only the, the staff walking behind us on either side because everyone else was like our backs to us. So we really, if it didn't kind of feel like we had our own little section yeah, there. As good as you could get in that, that restaurant. Yeah, for it sure, really yeah. good. And so it like, I definitely didn't feel as like, nervous about eating indoors there i mean i've eaten indoors since covid but it was like wasn't before delta and it definitely wasn't in florida <laughs> yeah. but um but uh yeah no, so i felt i felt okay once we got there it wasn't so bad and we had this big uh julie and i picked out and that we had we had to order two things including that giant the, the plowman's platter which is like this massive like kind of semi charcuterie thing but there's really no meat on it other than the scotch egg which i i'm a I'm a sucker for scotch. You know how like I'm a sucker for special edition Blu-rays where it says limited edition. <laughs> if I see a scotch egg on the menu, I have to get it. So, but yeah, uh, and you guys good. had a couple of different things too. It was pretty good, right? You liked the food yeah, there, yeah, right? yeah. We had the fish and chips, and um, the kids had some mac and cheese, more traditional stuff. But it was really, really good. Um, and then you guys, well, I guess what you guys took off about three, two thirty three. Yeah. Yeah. We left and we actually had a half empty flight by the way, on the way home. It was crazy. We kept switching. So we'd have like our uh, three seats again. So I have a two in a row streak now building of like <laughs> with no one sitting next to us in a three spot. Uh, but we kept moving around. So it worked out pretty good. Um, 
So, yeah, because so they, our flight was like half empty going home. They must have just needed that plane elsewhere because you never see an empty flight these days because there's half the flights there used to be. So, but I want to hear about what your day because I haven't even talked to you like at all about this day because we got back and we both got into our work mode. So yeah, we, really... we, um, so yeah, when you guys left, we decided to basically, you know, close the park. Why not? Because, you know, we had, you know, we had three hours left before they closed at six. So we decided to just take the kids on some stuff that they had not gotten a chance to get on yet. Um, like, and unfortunately some of the worst rides there, <laughs> we decided to go do Jimmy Fallon again, just to get some AC, oh, no. <laughs> uh, but the kids enjoyed that. They, you know, yeah. and I will have to say Jimmy Fallon gets a little bit of a bad rap. I mean, it's for what it is, you know, a motion, it's a typical motion simulator ride, but Personally, I find it a little more entertaining than like Despicable Me, just from the theming. I, I don't, I don't. Not that I love Jimmy Fallon, but at least it's not like kid oriented. You know what I mean? Right. It's, it's more a little. At least it feels a little more adult. So yeah, we had a fairly good time in that one. Um, the I, probably my biggest mistake was going back to Fast and Furious. So oh. we were walking by Fast and Furious, and I was like, oh my gosh, like there's zero line, there's nobody in line, zero wait. And I was like, should we, should I do it? Should I? I, but part of me was like this morbid curiosity. Is it really as bad as I remember? Could it possibly be as bad as I remember? There's no <laughs> way. So I told Joshua, I said, Joshua, would you like to go on that? It's about cars and it's got the same ride vehicle as King Kong. He, oh, it's because Joshua loves King Kong. Yeah, yeah he loved that ride. I could not believe and that. And Joshua that was... likes cars. He loves Hot Wheels yeah. cars. I was like, well, maybe, you know, maybe this would be a good one for him to go on. So yeah, we went on it and oh man, that, that ride is so bad. <laughs> So bad. It it's as bad, if not worse, than I remember before. So well, especially because it replaced an amazing attraction. Yeah, it's a just disaster. So yeah, uh, it's just it it's everything that King Kong does right is like I I don't, I don't know how you screw up basically the same ride system with, with that garbage. But and I and I'm I personally I like the Fast and Furious movies. I mean I think they're kind of dumb fun. I. I like the, it's not the theming that turns me off. It's just it's just terrible. Um, it's just bad. It's just it I just remember the fake. graphics being really. The graphics bad, are like... so horrible. It look it's so cheesy. Yeah, it's it's bad. But anyway, um, so that was enough of that. So we we ended up closing the park down. I think we went we went on ET again. Uh, you know, kind of just tried to hit the things that the kids had not gotten to see. Um, and then Anna wanted to go back to um, she wanted to go back to islands and do some of the. Um, Harry Potter stuff before she left. So that's what we, that was our final thing. We took the train back one more time. And then we went over to City Walk and oh, got a, had a bit of a terrible dinner uh, because I wasn't hungry. The kids couldn't decide on the same thing. It was slammed crowded. So really? I think on a, on, that was a, Tuesday. yes, it was slammed crowded. Like everybody was understaffed. Like it ended up taking us like, an hour and a half to two hours to get out of there just to get dinner for everybody. And think about a cowfish, which was like packed. Like, I remember I couldn't even get a reservation. We got a walk. We walked right in and got service right away. Go figure. Yeah. So anyway, by the, we didn't even get back to the hotel until almost eight or a little bit after eight o'clock. So we, and this whole time we had planned to hang out by the pool the rest of the day. Well, the pool closed at nine so oh, our, it wasn't even 10 o'clock? No, I'm nine? sorry, it was 10. Yeah, the pool oh, closed okay. at 10. So by the time we got changed and everything, we had maybe a li- maybe an hour to hour and a half at the pool. But we went down and um, ended up still having a great time. So we had another awesome waiter at the pool for, th- for that evening. And I don't remember his name, unfortunately, but he was super, super cool. And we told him we wanted a drink. And he's like, do you, you guys – you know, you want to open up a tab and we're like, no, 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 no. We, you know, we got a long drive home in the morning, you know, just want one drink to relax. So he hooked us up. (laughs) I don't know what he did. I don't know what he told that bartender, but those were the two strongest drinks I had the entire time I was at Universal. And they were just like, well, yeah, our first, that pool party, that does good drinks. It's Hollywood, Halloween Horror Nights, I think. Oh my Lessens the alcohol on purpose, but the the pool, they give you a lot. Oh yeah. Olivia had the strongest margarita I think I've ever tasted in my life. And I had some, I think I had another blue suede shoes and this one was like spiked heavy. Like he, he, he really, really hooked us up, and he was so super cool and super nice to us. And I uh, just had a really nice, chill, relaxing evening at the pool, and then um, and got to bed a little bit early, and and got up and just had a fantastic ride back. No traffic. Ran into a little nice. bit of traffic around Orlando getting out, but other than that, 
had a straight drive back and got home about uh, about seven thirty. Oh, that's not bad. Which at was all. not bad. No. So, <clears throat> excuse me, but yeah, so it was a uh, you know a great little trip back and kind of a nice relaxing winding down, um, which which was which was really really good. Um, but let's talk about these new attractions because we got so Brian and I got to see three attractions we had not seen before: uh, Born Stuntacular, Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure, and Velocicoaster. So. I guess we'll start off in order here. Um, Born Suntacular. This is a an attraction, a show attraction that um, our buddy Mike worked on. Actually, his company um, made some. He just did some of the rigs and stuff, uh, heavy uh, lifting stuff for the stage that they use. And I was thoroughly impressed with this. I did not expect. I, I thought it would be good. But yeah. I did not expect to enjoy this as much as I did. And basically the concept is you have this huge high def screen. Massive. Oh, but the best screens I've ever seen. Like, yeah, anywhere. crystal, crystal clear. So clear, in fact, that as we'll as I mentioned to Brian, there were times where I could not tell what was the screen and what was the people in front of the screen. That's how crisp it Especially was. Especially that fight scene in the beginning. Yeah. Like the opening thing blows you away. But the whole the whole concept is you're trying to track down Jason Bourne. I think it's named Jason Bourne, right? It's been a while since I've yeah, seen yeah. the Bourne movies. Um, but you're trying to like tr- track him down. They have a really guy, a guy that looks just like uh, Matt Damon from a distance. And uh, he was doing a really good job. But you're trying to track him down. So you're kind of following Bourne. Almost like, a, almost like you're a security camera like following him. And yeah, and they set that up in the pre-show. I think they kind of give you, they're like, this is technology, never been used before, but you will always be, you'll be in him through space and time and kind of a thing. Yeah, like they kind of like But, they, but it, it, you buy into it because it really, Julia Stiles does a good job in the beginning, I think, explaining it. Like, she does it in a way that's not cheesy because she's such a good actress, I think. So she yeah. She play, played off really well. I thought it was good, too. If you, I, I have seen the Bourne movie, so I was familiar with it, but if you haven't seen them, they do a pretty good job of kind of getting you up to speed of what this actually is all about. I thought they did a really good job at that, but you're basically watching these people, live actors in front of the screen, which is a backdrop of you know, different locales. And there's sometimes there's props that are wheeled out. Like there's cars, there's towers and stairs, and they're doing stunts and jumping off of these things and doing fight sequences and, you know, jumping off cars, but you got the screen going in the background. So it makes it look like they're, you know, in some other world locale or driving down a highway or something. And the screen is so crystal clear that it looks very, very realistic. And the stunts are fun. I mean, it's a lot of choreographed fight sequences. I was personally, I was just impressed by the timing because the actors on stage have to be perfectly synchronized to the screen in the back, or you would break the entire illusion. And their timing was just impeccable how they, how they pulled all this off. Yeah, and and so and what's great is so it replaced the you know the other uh, like revolutionary attraction of somewhat of that type, which was you know the T two one, um, but like you know and but obviously they advanced it in so many ways because that one you needed three D glasses for this one though it's like they did it all you know the three D was like I guess real three D I mean you literally like Tim said it's like you had actors interacting with the screen and I I remember they used to do that effect well on the the disaster uh, attraction pre-show where they would like the guy would like hand a book from the screen, like Christopher mm-hmm. Walken would hand a book out and the guy would grab it, you know, little tricks like that. But, to, but you know, yeah, it's easy to do that with a book, but now trying to do like literally a big budget Hollywood motion picture. And now I, I will say I have never seen any of the Bournes in its entirety. I think I used, I keep seeing the beginning of the one with Oscar Isaac in the beginning. That's the one I, but and I have them all. They're all in the monolith. So now I actually want to watch them because the attraction just blew me away in so many ways. Like I like I, I knew that like Tim said, like you knew it was gonna be good. And you know, of course we we're gonna see it because we wanted to support our, our buddy Mike because he you know he was so proud of it and he should be because this this is what this shows what a theme park show would could be like because in every way it had like it just it's like Every scene is just more impressive than the next. And what's great is, though, you know, I've been going to Universal literally since I was, I think, like four years old. Like, you know, the one in Hollywood I used to go to. So, like, I've seen Universal in its its early days of, of attraction-based things where the stunt shows, like the Wild West stunt shows and the the, the different little, like, 
like stage shows would be the the, uh, the one of the marquee things you know like in hollywood i remember i when i used to go it had no rides other than when i first used to go it had the tram tour and shows that's it and an area called prop plaza which was like a giant phone and a and a van that you could like it was made kind of like it looked like a real van but it was really like styrofoam based you could <laughs> lift it up for pictures and it used to be one of my favorite things. So, but, like, that's what I remember, uh, you know, my introduction to Universal was that. So I like that they took something that's back into their roots of, like, a good old-fashioned, like, stunt show. But then now you see, years later, what the technology can do. And they just did it. It was so flawless. Like, there was, like, not that I was looking for it, but... Like, I dare anyone to try and find, like, like you know, look at that thing and find a flaw, like, the way they did start. And things. Like, especially that ending sequence when he's flying on a helicopter, supposing he's, like, hanging, you know, those scenes you see in every action movie. And you're literally following it to them, and it feels like you're almost moving with it without any kind of, like, other effect other than the screen and his actual physical, like, swinging from the top of the theater. And... Yeah, I, I tell you, this is one do not miss. Don't chalk it off to, like, another, like, I don't want to go see a show at Universal. I want to ride rides. Well, this is as thrilling as, as a lot of the rides are. Like, I mean, to me, if you gave me this versus Fast and the Furious, it wouldn't even be a, a, a second thought to do this well, over Fast and the Furious. I would see this 50 times over going on <laughs> Fast and the Furious. The other thing that was neat about it, though, was that um, this is something that literally could not have been done even a few years ago, because they just would not have right. had the screen technology to do it. They physically couldn't have done this a few years ago. So if you want to see like cutting edge technology, go check this show out. Um, I mean, at, at some point it'll be old technology, but right. at, the, yeah. at the time, I mean, this is so, so cool and so cutting edge that it's, it's very, very impressive. Yeah, I, I mean, this is like, you know, you want to rank. I, I definitely think this is one of my favorite attractions at the uh and for a movie, think about it. For a movie, I have never really haven't seen franchise. I just know little things about. For me to be so blown away, that that's pretty telling. You know that I was so engaged in something that I really knew the basics about only. Yeah. And I think that's just a good job to the attraction because, like you said, the pre-show does a good job catching you up to see what it is, and the storytelling. They didn't lose for storytelling during the show either. Like you never felt lost at what's going on, and it never, never felt like they were just doing something to do it. It like all flowed in a nice little eighteen minute package. They know, pack like a the lot into that eighteen minutes. Wow. Right. Yeah. Um, right. Definitely. Definitely an amazing thing. Next up was Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. This one, of course, I'm dying to get on ever since it, we we actually saw it built or being built yeah. when we were there in 2018. So I was dying to get on this one. I will tell you, Brian, I was. Very much uh, surprised at the intensity of this roller coaster. I I was expecting, I thoroughly was expecting a, essentially a kiddie coaster. Um, I, I was expecting something definitely very family oriented. And um, this thing scared my kids so bad they never wanted to ride it again. <laughs> yeah, and I'm surprised because... They, you know, they love like rides like the Mummy, which we you got to tell that was a, a total flip flop. It was like last year it was Anna's favorite ride. This year it was Joshua. You couldn't get him off it. Yeah, and you couldn't get Anna on it. It was weird. But yeah, this thing is intense. Now, granted, for like coaster, you know, guys yeah. like me and Brian, I'm not saying it's like intense, like like a big coaster. But for what it is, which is a family style coaster, those launches are really fast. Uh, it it has a lot of you know it was a lot higher a lot faster launches were more intense than i expected and it was a lot of fun don't get me wrong i, I absolutely yeah. loved it and um i think the kids will love it in a few years i think give them maybe a couple of years i think they'll they'll totally be all over it i think they're just still a little bit weren't expecting that that level that that, that speed and that height uh they're not used to rides like that but i was blown away by this one i thought it was a blast yeah, no, this has this has so and this has a lot of coaster elements that are that are still not a lot. Um, you know, there's not a lot in of these these elements out there. One of them I'm not going to mention due to, you know, because in case you don't know about it, I would hate to spoil a surprise. 
in it. But um, but I mean, you know, you don't find many like you know, uh, you know, family coasters that will go up a spiked hill like that and then drop you backwards. You know, I mean, that's 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 you know, that's intense for for you know, just common roller coasters at times and uh, you know like part of me was wondering i'm like did it seem more intense because that was the first roller coaster i've been on in like two years <laughs> or was it just that good and i think it was a mix of both i mean i like it was so weird like right when i got back into the roller coaster seat it was like it was like i never left so that's why the only reason why i say it might be a little of both because i mean i felt like it was you know really well done i mean and of course it's like you know it's you know you know as being coaster connoisseurs as we are, you know, you can kind of look on the track to see, where, you know, like okay, there, there, I see the launch mechanisms, you know, the 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 the, I, uh, the you know the the linear induction spots, mm -hmm. so to speak, for lack of a better word. So you knew where you were going to launch, but still, it's like it still blew me away on how intense it was for a family coaster, like you said. But like for people that like kids that don't know to look for that, they probably like. I could see why Joshua and Anna didn't expect it, you know, like, whoa, this is this is a launch. This is like Yankee Man. And there's that one sequence where you go really you go flying up through the um I guess that's supposed to be the Ministry of Ministry of Magic building, whatever that is, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um I all the now the coaster people and the Harry Potter people are probably yelling at me right now. They're like, <laughs> That's not what that is. But um, you know, and there's that part where you launch and you go upwards. And, you know, that that could I could see why that would be intense for for some kids that are really not big on coasters. And it's funny because I guess it makes sense because I think Joshua said it, right? He said he didn't like it because you could see everything. Yeah. It was outside. It's funny enough. He, he loved the mummy because he felt like he couldn't fall because he was indoors. So he didn't – he actually – you know how some people say, oh, I would never ride an indoor roller coaster because it's too black and I can't see where I'm going. Joshua liked that aspect of it. He liked not seeing able, where he's going because it it didn't give him time to be scared. Whereas with Hagrid, I mean, you're completely outdoors. You could see how high up you are. And I think that's what really frightened him because he felt like he he could fall out. Right. But, you know, overall, I, I mean, I think like, I mean, I was really disappointed, you know, to hear that they, you know, because like I remember that was one of my favorite uh, things when I first ever went to Islands of Adventure was, was Dueling Dragons. And then it became Dragon Challenge because it was such it was a first of its kind dueling inverted coasters. You know, there's nothing else like it like that, you know, and it was it was such a cool concept. But I have to say, it, you know, once Harry Potter came around it, it needed this ride over that, sadly, you know, in terms of a thematic um, yeah, yeah. you know, a piece. And I think, you know, if they're going to replace that with something like this, I mean, I, I, they did an amazing job on an attraction to, to put in that section. Like, I mean, now if you think of that, if you think of Hogsmeade section, you have now two roller coasters, one little kitty coaster, one really like good family coaster that could thrill, you know, regular coaster fans and families and kids. And then you have Forbidden Journey. So you have three, uh, you know, you have two, like, like A-list attractions in there with a little bonus one. And then, you know, now you throw the Hogwarts Express. I mean, you you know, between, you could easily spend a day just going back and forth between the two Harry Potter sections of Universal and and, and feel like you got your money's worth. I mean, it's that, yeah. it's that well done. Uh, lastly was Velocicoaster. This was definitely my most anticipated because this is a true coaster. Yes. And it was very highly rated. Um and it it surpassed my expectations. I knew I expected it to be good. I knew it would be good. I thought it was, and again, maybe part of it is I had not been on a true real real roller coaster in two years, but I had a blast on this one. It has I, I couldn't think of a single thing that I would really criticize about it. the uh, The first launch is terrific. The second launch is even better. Yeah. If you can believe oh, that. Oh, yeah, and that, that when you go up that top hat. Yeah, I mean, how, well, how many coasters do you have where the second launch is better than the first? And this is one of them. Um, but, yeah, you go up to, like, a top hat over a big hill, which reminded me a lot of Fury's Treble Clef. Yeah, it did. It, yeah, it was very – It's not very, as good. Like, yeah, not as good. It's no, not as good as but, Fury's Treble Clef, but it's it has that same feeling of you're just getting, like, launched up this hill. You're kind of like, oh, my God, am I going to come out of my seat? And then you're, like, dropping back down. And the roll over the water, they call oh it, they God. call it the Mosasaurus roll. It is the most, maybe the most intense roll that I've been on, on a coaster. 
it was it's it's like forceful it's fun you feel like you're like right over the water i mean it's just and you feel like you're gonna come out i like i felt like i was flying out of that seat yeah great (laughs) it's very intense and in a good way it was i was super i was not expecting that i mean i was looking for the launches That, that was my thing i was like looking that element i was looking forward to i did not expect that role to like be my favorite part of the attraction yeah no that was great um, I love the other the other uh, inverted section where you kind of flip over and you're going. You know, it's not like a quick upside down element. You're like you're you're kind of going for an extended time over. It's like really like, but you're going at a full speed, but you still feel like you're like what is it, at least like two three seconds of being upside down. And I love the the t- the, the a lot of the quick tight turns and the little like surprise turns, which you couldn't even see. You're looking right at the track, but you don't realize it does a quick curve and then a. And then followed by another curve downward and really tight spots, you know, and it was just yeah. I know we were. I mean, we only got to ride it twice. I would have. I could have easily marathoned that roll that ride over and over again. But um, you know what? I mean, both rides we had on it were phenomenal. Um, I had one of by far one of the best cues for a roller coaster that I've been on. Just the 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 video was one of my favorite videos because I think we. I don't know. It was funny. The second time we were on it we kind of got we got rushed through it a little bit more i felt like though we had a lot more space like time to really watch that video the first ride but chris pratt is hilarious in that because and oh and we should say one of the things you and i both comment that we liked is they didn't do something that a lot of like roller coasters tend to do when they're themed into an area where they'll make it seem like you're about to board your supersonic jet vehicle no they literally this ride was themed as a roller coaster in the middle of the raptor section of Jurassic Park. Yes. <laughs> like, they didn't hide the theming. That was it. You were going to be on a roller coaster. Because Chris Pratt even has that line. He's like, oh, God. Yeah, let's build a roller coaster in the middle of the raptor section. You know, And that was cool. And they had that one cool element where the the launch goes by you in the queue in the through that tunnel section. And when it does it, you get a computer graphic of the raptors chasing after the coaster, which I thought was a nice touch. Universal is literally king of the the little pluses that they put in there. Even more so, dare I say, Disney than they do. Because there's just little, tiny little things that you... The more you go, you notice. And it's just every time I'm there, I I feel like I find something little, a new little nuance that Universal has done to put something in. And yeah, it's like... And the, the ride, the queue, no matter how long, goes really fast. They just... That, that, because I think there's like, there must be three trains running because they jam through that ride. You're like, you're, you're hardly ever stopped. Yeah. I mean, well, the throughput of that ride has been a, a discussion point among the coaster fans for a while now, ever since it opened, people talk about what a people eater that thing is. I mean, you, you don't have to wait long for that ride. It is really booking. And they even found a way to make the lockers easy and fast. Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. That was crazy too. So. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was a great ride. So I was really, really, really happy with um, with every new attraction. I mean, it, it's it's fun to be able to go down to a park and see new attractions. It's even better when every one of them blows you away. Yeah, like there was not one thing where it's, oh, well, you yeah. know, it was all three new things that we hadn't done, all top notch, like all like ranked, like high level. It was great. All right, so moving on to food and drink. Well, we had, of course, um, a, a, a cornucopia of, of foods to be able to try down Halloween Horror Nights. And yeah, we ate. There was no diets here. No, in this, I think uh, I this you know, remember, Brian, I, I think I was mentioned to you guys. We were talking about how much walking we were doing. I said I'd never gained weight on a theme park trip. Well, yeah. I broke the rule this time because despite having walked a full 30 miles, I, I, wow. I was counting this on my watch. 30 miles over the course of the vacation, I still managed to somehow gain three pounds by the time I, I only gained a pound and like a half, actually. Yeah, three Which pounds, was crazy so. because I, I, I think, you know what it was? I drank so much that I was like, I drank a ton of water that a couple of those days. So I, maybe I got rid of it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what I, I did. I definitely am back on the diet train again. Yeah. But, uh, oh, no, I know. But like after two days, I was like of eating, I went back to eating normal and it was like, Within two days, I was back to like lower than I started when I went. So yeah, it'll, it's, it'll it's, come it's, off. It, it was a lot of like sugar. I think we ate. Is yeah, what really did it. Well, speaking of sugar, so we did. Um, yeah. Voodoo Donuts, of course, had the Bride of Frankenstein uh, donuts, which are cool. Um, 
the toothsome was oh my god, oh my these god. milkshakes yeah. are ridiculous. Yeah, we, if you guys have gone and seen the menu, the one I got was a um, I forgot what they call it. I think they call it like a marshmallow crisp or something, but it was like a vanilla yeah. milkshake with a complete giant rice crispy treat on top and a marshmallow on top. And that was one of the mo- more tame ones. I think you and I had the most somewhat of the most tame ones. Like you between you and I cuz I had the thrilling vanilla which was like like a vanilla ice cream and had vanilla pastry cream and had vanilla wafers around it. It had some vanilla macaron. It's like everything was vanilla in this thing and whipped cream. So it was mine was like an overload of of just pure sugar like sweet like, you know, almost sickeningly sweet. And I think I left a little left, but it was good. But I think it was, I think in terms of the most overindulgent one, I think Olivia takes the cake. Didn't she have like a full on red velvet muffin on the she top? She had of- a, a <laughs> literally giant, like full size, not a small, a full size, large red velvet cupcake on top of her milkshake. Oh, cupcake, already, right. Not muffin. Cupcake. Yeah, all red, which is already huge milkshake. Uh, yeah. It was it was ridiculous. I mean, and that's why you go to Toothsome to get these yeah. just ridiculously oversized milkshakes. It's part of the gimmick there. Yeah, I mean, it's a new thing. A lot of the bur- – I don't know about you, but a lot – like on Long Island, all the, the the burger places around here, that's like the thing they, they're they tagging with. You know, because burger, fries, and shake, right? That's like the signature Americana meal. So, like, I think the places around here, all the burger bars near us, they've also added crazy shakes like that where, like, the whole cup – like, there's this one where the whole mug is, like, cut encased in icing. You know, you got to, like, eat your way to find the mug. Yeah. You know, it's like that <laughs> kind of stuff. And, like, I think, like, uh, like Julie had a co- had coffee. Hers was the espresso buzz. She was, like, dying for that thing all day. Remember, once I read it to her, remember? Yeah. Like, we couldn't get them over there fast enough. And hers just had, like – Everything had some sort of coffee, and it was like coffee, ice cream, espresso, chocolate espresso, beans, fresh whipped cream, and had some kind of sauce that was espresso. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> it's amazing Julie slept that night, actually. I forgot. What did the kids have again? I, oh, some, was Anna the one with the big brownie on the top of it? Yeah, and I had like a giant brownie on top of hers. I can't remember what Joshua got. They, they were, yeah, they were way too big for one kid, for sure. No, yeah, they they almost need to make. They should have made like a kid size thing, or a, you know, be neat like a little sample shake. But I, I don't know if that would have worked for them. But um, yeah, no, that was that was I think the kick we needed to kind of propel us into that to that horror nights um, thing. And then we I think we switched. So the first night I didn't. Um, first night we actually had this. I think I uh, was I Julie and I split the Leatherface cherry pie, which was pretty cool. It was a really hot, fresh, like hot cherry pie but it was like made so it looked like Leatherface's mask which was a pretty impressive feat because pie crusts yeah, that was I cool are not easy to do um and that was really well done and then we also we all partaked in the uh or partook i don't know in the bourbon candied pork belly thing which was which it was funny it was hit or miss because like i guess olivia said hers she had um she had a lot of fat on hers yeah, and the did. candy. But Julie and I had a good chunk of meat to the point where we were like had to like almost pull it out. It was so thick of meat. Yeah, I think it just depends on what cut you got. I think Olivia's was a little bit more on the fat side, but mine was pretty good. Mine was kind of like even fifty fifty. But yeah, that that was really good. It was, it was basically like really thick cut bacon with um, candy for lack of a better word, candy apple coating. Yeah, that's, that's what, what it was. was. It was. But it was yeah, so it was, but good. Yeah, it was bourbon candy apple, so it was like cooked in. So not that it was alcohol; it wasn't alcoholic. It just was a bourbon candy, yeah, flavor coating yeah. on that, which was good. Um, the one uh, you guys ate, like kind of a, uh, I think you guys ate the Italian food that first. Uh, it was the second night, but when Julie and I went to that Bon Me place, which I have to warn people, that thing was like talk about a, a time suck. I think you guys had finished your entire meal by the time we came back with ours. Yeah, it was like because like they were taking orders, but then they went and it was one of those food trucks that they have set up. We placed an order and it took like 20 minutes to make a to get Bon Me stuff. And there was no like sense of urgency like in the staff. Like I could see like arms moving and it looked like literally they were just like like writing a poem or something. <laughs> it was like so slow moving. and It wasn't even that good. And I think her Julie's made her herself sick that night. She didn't feel good after it. Um, mine was just a regular, like, banh mi with, like, a chicken tender. It was, like, more traditional with Thai chili sauce. It was okay. Um, it was definitely on the salty side of it. I definitely, in hindsight, they probably should have tried one of the other items that they had there. But something about it at the time sounded good. Um, I guess we should go into our, um, 
our of course our, our drinks that we had they had the two blinky cup drinks which was the poison tea party which was uh, that was the one we had first right or was yeah no we had yeah first? we had poison tea party first that was right. really good it's like a, yeah. almost like a um kind of like an arnold palmer because it's iced tea and lemonade but it's a yeah. lemonade rum punch with huckleberry and allspice it was so good yeah so it had like that little bit of kick but it had a like, nice really sweet fruity flavor on it and the blinky cups are fun anyway that's just and the, the bartenders they are like they they jam like to get you get your drink pretty fast even though the line's kind of long for these things but it's it's really it's almost like it's one of the traditions the main traditions we did not do the first time we went for the pizza fries that time this time we went we left the pizza fries because that line was ridiculous out the it was at the freaking like section of the park remember that uh, we passed by it that one time yeah. and it was like must have been easily a hundred people on the line. I'm like, it's not worth it. I mean, the pizza fries are good, but it's not. I'm not waiting on an hour line for something we had already. So I'm glad we had that. And then the next night, I guess Tim and I we forgot our, our drinks, which get a refill. That's a trick. You get a refill for half the price of the drink, but um, we forgot. But it's okay because we now we each ended up with two blinky cups. I got a red one the first night, blue one the second night, which are now actually sitting proudly in my Civil War studios. Uh, uh, and so the second one we had was a ghoul juice, which was a mango rum punch featuring, uh, it had Meyer's original dark rum with cherry brandy, lime, and bitters. So that one was not as good, but not, but not bad in any way. It's just the other one was a little better. I think the, but, like, I think the tea party one, I think to me was better only cause it tasted a little more unique. Right. The ghoul right. juice was good, but it tasted like. I guess it tastes like a more traditional rum punch, whereas the poison tea party with that iced tea in it just kind of had it a little bit unique flavor to it. Yeah, yeah, no, and it's it's good the way they do it because there's a lot of bars for it set up, and it's a quick because they have it pre-made. They literally just it's more of a one of those like giant mixed coolers of drink, and they just kind of put a little ice in and pull it out the spigot, and there you go, you know. So it's easy way to do that though. Um, Cowfish, of course, didn't disappoint. This time, I, for the first time, I actually got the burgushi, which is um, one of their unique things where it's like a, a burger and sushi mixed together in a roll. And it was okay. Um, our, my truffle Parmesan fries, I, bacon fries, were the hit, though. Those were solid. And then those fried pickles you guys ordered that we all mm, had were good. good yeah. um, we got that cool appetizer Julian I got, which was kind of like a jalapeno and some yellowtail. Which was nice. Uh, what'd you guys get again? You guys got something that was really good too. Yeah, so. I, well, I ended up getting a big sushi platter. I think we all kind of right, got some sushi, it. like California rolls and stuff. And I, my, all mine was really, really good. And um, a, a really good ginger mango margarita. Oh, right. You got that drink. Yeah. Yeah, I got to say, cowfish. I mean, you know, in terms of you're going to go for like a real sushi, sushi place, yeah, it, it's like run of the mill that. Right. It's just something about the atmosphere and the, the variety that they have there at, for a theme parks area is, 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 you know, is really good. And I just, it's kind of like a tradition. Like, I, it's like, it's like one of the go to places. We went there last time. We had to go there this time again. And it's such a great time. We had a out, nice outdoor seat. Yeah. It's pretty good. good. Our, had some good things. And then we, you know, then oh, I did say it wasn't on there, but I, I told the story of Leaky Cauldron already, which was a um, good, fun place. Definitely a very, uh, very Harry Potterish restaurant in terms of like what you can get there. Very like British pub kind of food that they have there, but it's pretty, pretty, uh, definitely a pretty good selection of items, and it's, it's definitely not something you want to eat uh, if you're not hungry. No, <laughs> to give you a lot. That that's one. So. That's a place I would say if like if you're wanting the true like. Harry Potter dining experience is probably yeah. one, of the, one of the better places to go. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, and I should say I did have that that morning uh, before you guys got there when Julie and I went in. We got the um, – I went and I got the pumpkin pasty and that little pumpkin uh, like cake, which it was shaped like a pumpkin. It wasn't pumpkin flavor. It was like a spice cake in the middle with like orange icing, which was very reminiscent if you like those Hostess cupcake icings. You know, with mm-hmm. that orange cupcake with that. It was like that, but what was so unique is the little stem of the pumpkin was a little piece of licorice, which I thought was touched. The entire thing was edible, which was great. Um, that was good. And then we got um, one thing, which I we didn't have the last time, but they have at that same shop, they have these caramels. So I ended up getting, we, Julie and I got the three, it was like three for 12, so we got three of them. And I have to say, we left them in the car. We didn't eat them until actually we got home, and they stayed perfectly. Oh, nice in shape in the box i don't know who, who the employee was that they should have got her name because she packed it perfectly and she gave us three amazing pieces and i had the pumpkin one i think julie had a lavender or something and we had a coconut one really good because they're like really good chewy hard caramels not like the hard like the chomp ones but the 
the like kind of in that middle section where they're creamy but like so solid, you know. So they're like a almost tastes like a bit you're eating like a chocolate fudge or something like that. But it's really good. So I highly recommend that for anyone that goes there looking for a good sweet. But um, yeah, it, it was funny because our, our of course our good friend Emily she was like uh, she kept saying stop with the food pictures you're killing me I'm getting hungry because I've got yes we did post a lot of food pictures but we did post a lot of other pictures like of the houses and the scare zones which we are about to get into now I think because I think people are dying to know our rankings yeah so I figure out how we'll do this Brian so let's go from ten to one and yeah. Brian and I is actually our bottom five are the exact same. Yeah, it's kind of funny. They're like so we'll uh so we'll just start there. So my number 10 house, this is at the very bottom. Both Brian and I agreed on Welcome to Scary Horror in the Heartland. Now this is uh Scary is referring to uh Cary, Ohio with uh they have the S there for the scary, but that's a traditional Halloween Horror Nights, you know, location. Uh it's been featured in past Halloween Horror Nights and of course it's a good time to to put a caveat on these reviews. Both Brian and I have not we're not Halloween Horror Nights aficionados that know everything about everything that's ever happened at Halloween Horror Nights, and that does affect the rankings because as you'll see, there's a house that Brian and I both really really liked, but it was there last year, and then you got these right. folks on you know the bloggers and stuff are like almost overwhelmingly ranked it fairly low because they'd already seen it before, which is understandable. So, right, right. To, but to us, it was new. So we ranked it really, really high, but you'll see, you know, familiarity with these houses and, and especially if you had gone last year to their little mini Halloween Horror Nights production they had done where they had a couple of houses, you could see why you know, those houses might be ranked lower for somebody that was more familiar with them. Uh, but yeah, welcome to the scary. I just thought, I mean, there was nothing wrong with this house. Like none of the houses this year were bad. Like none of right. them were bad. This was a, I just thought this one was very, compared to the rest of the houses, there was no consistent theme to me, or at least I didn't pick up on what the consistent theme was. It just almost seemed like, it almost like they took all the leftovers from all the other houses and just kind of threw it in this one house just to make one. That's what it felt like to me. Like they had just taken all these disparate pieces of other houses and just slapped them together. And I, I didn't know what the theme was. I didn't know what the story was. I was just kind of walking through I, I, you know, it remind it reminded me of uh, the the cinema. What was the one we like, Scary Cinema or something from two years back, where yeah. it was like a little different scene, and that's fine. Except I think that one at least, um, like you kind of knew it was like you were gonna. It was very significant. Like each room you knew was gonna be a different, like drive in esque movie. Sequence. Well, yeah, it was clearly but, labeled as that. Yeah, yeah this one it kind of blended and. I, and now, granted, like Tim said, we are not aficionados of this, so we don't know if like there were some other things that people because I, I some people ranked it high. They like this one, and I'm wondering if because they got stuff that maybe they saw stuff in the past years that we didn't know about. Right. So to us, it seemed like jumbled. And and again, like Tim and I have used this line multiple times through the trip and to when we discuss this with people. Even the worst house at Halloween Horror Nights is still better than any other house in any other. Regional, regional haunt yeah. you'll find <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah exactly uh next up at number nine was beetlejuice surprisingly i thought i would love yeah. this house a lot more than i did but and you know i see a lot of people rank it low only because it's not very scary i didn't rank it low because of that um because i, I didn't expect it to be scary to be quite honest that's why we took joshua right. in at first we thought it would be more of kind of a you know kind of comedic kind of funny one i just thought they with some of the themes, some of the set design and stuff we had seen from like Poltergeist when we went and those stranger things, like the just amazing sets and everything. I thought this one was fairly stripped down and I don't know if that was just, a, I mean, this one, this one was also featured last year uh, in a limited yeah. capacity. I, I, I just felt like for the IP and as important as Beetlejuice has been to universal, I mean, there's been stage shows and all this kind of stuff with him as important a character, the house just felt like it was missing something. It, it, it had some neat elements. It was like a fun house. There was a great, uh, one of those effects where they have the walls, the tunnel spinning around you. Oh yeah. Which was re done really well. Really I well. I mean, I it, was like getting yeah. busy in there. <laughs> that was great. And, and, but you know, a lot of it was just like static mannequins. It wasn't actual real actors. You had, um, 
Yeah, other than the beginning, right? When he was talking up. Right. The top. Yeah. And there was like a couple of Lydia's, I think, that were real. But most of the most of the people were were I mean, most of the thing props and stuff in there were just like mannequins. And like Brian was saying, you miss the the most iconic scene of the entire movie is the dinner scene. And there's no dinner scene represented. In this house. It's funny, dinner scenes just were not represented no. in all of Halloween, as we'll get to in another half I just, later. I didn't understand it. I was like, why why, why leave out the most iconic scene in the entire movie? It didn't make any sense and, and to you, me. And now I know Universal, too, is like known for like that final scare when you leave a house of something. But with this house, I don't think it needed that. So I would have loved at the last sequence as you walking out would have been the whole Harry Belafonte song where everyone's like, kind of like in the air even if it was done like with a puppetry or something like that's how i expected to leave that house and now i'm extra critical because i had always uh, designed um like for one of the the coaster radio channel i had designed a beetlejuice ride and an attraction which i felt was like i'm like oh it'll probably be like this but just walking through it but so it's like i expect there's a couple of, like there was a, a couple of sequences that were cool like when they were in the um you know the 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 death sequence, uh, you know, when they, when they, when the, the, you know, with Juno, that's that office. There was a couple of cool things like that. Like they had the numbers, yeah, the number, yeah, you know, that yeah. he waited. But there was some cool stuff like that. But again, I think it like, it like it, it was basically what you expected rather than elevating it, right? Which I would yeah. have expected. And now, granted, you know, they, because of maybe it was there last year, they just decided like, you know, we need to just put this house back. Uh, we'll worry about the other ones. We'll just put this here as it is. And you know, it, it may have been designed to just be that introductory house, and which, in that aspect, it, it it performed well. It's just I I think you know, and plus a movie that I love so much, I'm gonna be extra critical. Of it, so I think like I would have loved that dinner sequence. It would have been really cool if you would have walked through, and you know they would have been with the you know the, the deo and all that stuff. But it just it yeah, so it, it kind of missed that. But I mean, maybe they felt it didn't work in, yeah. in a haunt section. But I mean, like you know, in terms of like that type of house, I think Stranger Things did it to perfection, kind of thing. Whereas like you literally just walk through the the episode of the show, but it was done really well. But I mean, again. Maybe because of COVID, they couldn't do what they wanted. Because I felt like some of the houses, I don't know if you noticed this, but there were a couple of spots where I felt like I think something was supposed to be there. And I instead, felt they like, just skipped it. Yeah, I felt like overall, as good as that, as as much as I enjoyed the houses, none of the houses lived up to like Poltergeist or even no, Stranger yeah. Things in terms of like the detail of the sets, the, the majesty of the sets. They were good. And there were some that did some parts really well, but I, ne I never felt like any of these houses were like super stand out, blow me away houses. They were they, they, all they good. felt like they weren't the complete, right? Right. Like yeah. And cool. I, and I have to assume some of that's due to COVID you got staffing, you've got, um, staffing issues. You've probably got supply issues. You know, I don't know. I don't know what all went into it. I have to believe you know, that had to play some role in it, but Right. But I think that's why that will explain why our number one house is what it is, because that's one that could excel without a lot of scare actors, suppose, right, you know, yeah. technically. But we'll get to that shortly. So. Uh, so number eight was one I was really disappointed to put this far down the list, and that was the Texas yeah. Chainsaw Massacre. I was really looking forward to this one because it's one of my top five horror movies of all time. Um, and I will say the, the other reason it pains me to put it, this far down the list is because they did an extremely good job with the set decoration on this house. I mean, it looked right. phenomenal. It looked like you were walking through the Sawyer house. Had that smell. That yeah. Meat smell. I had no problem with the setting of the house. I mean, I thought they just did a phenomenal job with it. I really, really liked that part of it. The, the problem I kind of had was more with the haunt structure itself. Uh, it was just a bunch of leather face jumping out at various moments yeah. And I thought they all different ones too. Yeah. Like they had the, the the one from Next Generation though, like the woman looking one. I just thought it was like I just for a Leatherface, I just thought they missed an opportunity to have more of the characters besides Leatherface in the house. Oh, Franklin. Yeah. There was, or, no Franklin. there was no Frank. Well, granted, I think this was supposed to be like an original story. Right. But right. still, like you still have some great characters from the films that just weren't in there. And you know, like family members you could have put in 
And instead, you basically just got a series of Leatherface jumping out at you. That's the only reason I, I put this house so low. I thought otherwise, this could have been maybe one of the best houses if they had done the story a little bit differently. But yeah, it, to me, it was kind of a missed opportunity. Yeah, and, and you know, and with the leather faces again, that's where like they really didn't startle you because of you can kind of see where they were going to come out. But I will say, so like the second time I walked through, I, I think I went through again with the Julie and I went through with Anna and Olivia that second night. And one of the things you and I loved about the first night, which is the yeah. you know that sound effect, wasn't there or very low on night two, so I didn't hear it as much. But that first leather face that came out. Whoever the scare actor was did an amazing job, and it kind of like really made the house a little bit more likable for me because he went out and he did this twirl with his chainsaw, and he and he stayed out there for a good five six seconds of of theatrics, um, which I was like, okay, that's kind of cool, you know. He that this Leatherface scare actor has got it, you know. He's got the mannerisms down, and he's got the the rat. But most of the time, it was just like you said. It was a, a Leatherface is jumping out and going like shaking a chainsaw, and it's like, at some level, they took a really elaborate, designed house, and made it generic in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah, which exactly. is and like they said, like yeah, like there was no dinner sequence in that either, which I thought was great. That you know, I don't think I saw Grandpa in there at all. Right, that's what and, I'm saying. And, like the, those classic characters, you could have had, you could fill the house with them. And made like yeah. a, a true excursion through the family, and instead I just I thought we were just kind of walking through their empty house with Leatherface was the only one home apparently that day, um, but yeah. So anyway, uh, next up number coming at number seven, another one I'm kind of disappointed to rank this low, and I believe maybe unfairly ranked this low, and that is yeah, same here. I feel exactly the same way. Uh, Universal Monsters: The Bride of Frankenstein lives now. This one. We saw very early. It was the second house we went through, and it was so early in the night. I was still dealing, kind of, kind of dealing with the kids. I wish I had gotten another run through of this house because I think I might have enjoyed yeah. it more. Um, I will say the story I thought was cool. The the story is that the actual Bride of Frankenstein is trying to create basically. It's almost like a, a gender revert, flip flop on on the whole Bride of Frankenstein story, which I thought was really really cool. Um, they cast a woman of color as the bride, which I thought was awesome. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a that was a neat uh, uh, a neat decision, and um, and and, and every, the scare actors did a fantastic job in this one. And there was nothing there's nothing wrong with this house for it to be ranked this low. I think the reason it's ranked this low for me is because really by the end of all of this, not having been able to see this house multiple times and it being so early in the in the process i just didn't have a good enough remembrance of it to rank it higher and then there was nothing right. that stood out to me to rank it higher right i mean i mean they did have this was a this was some level unique to some of the other houses where there was a lot of there was a not only just a story going by but there were full-on scenes that i think you needed to see and to really get a good thing and the way you just in general i felt like the houses you were kind of rushed through the houses a little more this year Probably due to capacity and COVID, and they just wanted to get people in and out, and they didn't want people to stay in there. So there were a couple of places. Like I remember the last time we went, there were spots where we could kind of stand a little bit and and, and marvel <clears throat> things a little better. And this one we kind of rushed through. So yeah, this is probably at a one. At, you know, if there's a regret of the trip, I think one of them might have been maybe we should have forced ourselves to see this house one more time to give it its its due because it really was. Um, well done and the performance of the scare actors were well done and i really loved the story element of it you know the the, the, the they took a, a story that everyone knows and and made an original universal monster story for, for, for uh you know for for a new generation of fans and i thought that was pretty cool so yeah this one does and, and you know and also another reason why this is low is because I think some of the other houses we're going to talk about were just that good. Yeah. You know, I mean, something's got to stay. Something's got to, there's got to be, an, you know, you're going to do an order. There's, some things are just going to go down for the fact that the others are just so good. Right. Yeah. I would say, like I said before, I think every house at this event was solid. That's not something I could say about when the time we went. Uh, I, I remember saying some of those houses weren't that great. This right. one, I thought yeah. every house besides possibly scary was at least decent. Um, and, and it's just a, this is a, t 
testament to the quality of the houses that, that a house like Bride of Frankenstein could be ranked number seven. Uh, that's just a testament to the quality of the, the entire event. Um, yeah. So coming in at number six, we both had Puppet Theater Captive Audience, which had led to one of the most humorous uh, encounters of the entire trip. But, <laughs> yeah, Tim and I were literally... Uh, it's not often you can be hysterical in the middle of a haunt yeah. like that. Like Usually you laugh at someone getting scared. Tim and I laughed at the actual scare attempt hysterically there were two that we laughed at that one and the one where i remember the house where they reached over julie's head really slow behind her and you and i were just watching it and we were hysterical <laughs> i thought it was gonna so grab her i really it. did yeah, yeah so puppet theater captive audience is uh, had a really cool facade i love the facade right. it looks like an old broken down puppet theater so the story of this this one is like there's a kind of like a combination puppet theater and ballerina troupe i guess uh, but in yeah. like this abandoned building that's haunted and stuff. So you had a good mix of, uh, you know, like scary broken ballerinas and scary puppets. And I, I really, I love the whole puppet thing. I love puppets, anything puppet. Of course, I've, as you've seen from our puppet master retrospective, yeah. I mean, Brian and I are both puppet freaks. So I love the theme already. And they did, I just thought the, the facade was really good. I thought the inside was, it was well done. I mean, it was solid all the way through. And uh, I'll let Brad, I'll let you talk about the funny part of that video. Uh... Yeah. So, so, so there was this one sequence where it was this weird baby puppet <laughs> that comes out of the wall. And you could totally see the guy controlling it yeah, behind. That's what it was just, funny about it. it. That's what, yeah, that's what was what made it even funnier. But he just moves this puppet out, and so it comes out in the wall closer to you. And it can get really close because it's not real. So it's like there's no COVID restrictions you got to worry about with this puppet. And it just comes out further, this baby puppet. And the guy goes like, Mama, <laughs> Mama. And Tim and I just lost it. We were hysterical. And, like, we were, like, almost to the point of where I think the next three elements, we were still laughing about this thing. <laughs> yeah. And it was just, it was so, it was just so bizarre. Zorro that it, it like I think it literally propelled this house higher than it like than it maybe it might have been down a notch if it wasn't for this thing because this thing was like one of the most memorable secret like I said it was probably my favorite moment in any house <laughs> out of all just this one little sequence of this weird baby puppet like uh, was going ma ma <laughs> the guy I swear to God they Universal if you're listening to this whoever was on there on on uh. I think it was Saturday night. Uh, give them a, a, a like a bonus check because they were like they are the perfect puppeteer for that. Oh, it's hilarious! <laughs> yeah. All right, so this is where Brian and I differ a little bit, but not by much. I mean, we're kind of just flip flopping here. So. Yeah, I mean, this could easily to me these two could flip flop, and the only reason I think I did the way I did is because the IP I love so much. And um, yeah. So well, let's talk about. I had at number yeah. five Netflix's The Haunting of Hill House. Brian had it at number four. Uh, yeah. We flipped our four and fives. But uh, I I was a little disappointed in Hill House. I'll be quite honest because I am also a big fan of the IP. Now, the, the, the initial intro into the house is really nice. You have the real, the nice facade of the mansion. I thought right. that was super cool. Um, I think the only thing that kind of bothered me about this house was I felt it was a little claustrophobic and I, I guess I could kind of understand it cause you're supposed to be going through a house and you've got, you know, ghosts, you know, around, but in my mind, I guess I was expecting like a little bit more of an open set where you could see kind of like ghosts in the background and this kind of thing. I felt you were kind of more in this one just kind of led through a series of really tight hallways with, um, the occasional ghost coming out of a boo hole thing, which to me just didn't fit the IP as much as I thought it was going to. It felt more like a traditional haunted house, and I was expecting something more along the lines of Poltergeist where you had these yeah. big set pieces. I mean, I liked it. What I liked, too, is that how you go, you enter the house through, like, the storm, like, from the, you know, when there was that crazy storm and, yeah. the, and everything. So, like, and it, you did such a good job to the point where it's very disorienting to me when we were walking in and it was really loud. And to the fact, remember, when we were waiting outside, we thought it was real thunder. It was so loud. Yes, we did. We thought it was real inside. thunder, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, so I don't know, something about it just was cool. And, of course, you got to see the bent neck lady. And, you know, it, it like, it didn't follow. Yeah, it, I will say it did not follow the, uh, the IP the way I thought it might. But... There was still something about it that I, I just remember being – it was really memorable to me in terms of um, 
just the feeling I got when I was in the house. Like it was like for me, like I know the claustrophobic uh, element didn't work for you, but I kind of thought it like enhanced it a little bit for me. But easily, like uh, you know, you catch me another day, and I may flip flop it with the next one, which was really good. And I think if maybe we were more um, long term horror night visitors. This one would have maybe been even higher, but yeah, um, I, I, and that one's icons, which is uh, you know, of course, the legend. You know, you got Jack, you got the caretaker, you got the usher, and Chance, and all the and they all were there, and 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 Eddie was in there. You know, they all were in there, and it was done in a way. And they, you know, of course, Jack was a was the star as he always is. Um, and it was this one was a la- You know, the thing is, this one didn't have much of a, um. Like a really the linear story was just like one of them was gonna like these different endings, which is kind of cool, you know, which would inspire you to go through the houses against like, time. We both both times we I guess you went through twice, right, Tim? Yeah. And I went through and both times we got the same. I probably every night it changes. It probably doesn't change per per night, yeah you per, know, sure. like per haunt. Yeah. You know? But um, it was cool. It was very loudly in your face. You get to see all the icons. So it's kind of a it's really a cool experience if you want to really get. Like up in your face with the the, uh, the 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 famous Halloween horror icons, which we got a little bit too in um, one of the scare zones, which was pretty cool. Also, I mean, Jack's pretty much all over the place in this event. Yeah, um, I th- we saw him in a number of places. I thought I I, I, put, I placed this one a little higher on my list. I had this one at number four. I've seen you know, some of the season pass holders and diehards. They have it you know, one or two. Uh, which I could understand because if you're like really into the, like the whole mythology of Halloween Horror Nights, I could see why this would be your favorite house. For me, not having that nostalgic connection to it, I ranked it a right. little lower. But I still enjoyed it, mainly on the strength of the scare actors. I thought they were really, really good. In fact, I think I had the only like legit scare of the entire trip was Chance jumping out at me on this one. Um and she's one of my favorite icons anyway. Yeah, mine too. So I was excited we saw her. Yeah, Here so is, yeah. I really love there's a sequence in uh there's a sequence in this house that I just absolutely loved. It might have been one of my favorite um rooms in any of the houses and that was this uh for the usher. There was a movie theater se- oh, sequence yeah, where yeah. you have all these dead bodies sitting in the movie seats and there's a there's an actual film playing in the projected behind behind you as you're walking through. So you can kind of look back and see the film and see the usher. And it was just a neat, neat room. I, th- I thought I loved that. It actually elevated this house for me, just that one single room. And then, of course, the end sequence was phenomenal where you have like the whatever icon they decided to ha- be the victor of the night is sitting up on a big throne. And they were just really like the scare actors were really the guy that was doing it. um was just like really into it. I mean, they were really doing a great job portraying the icons, which I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sure they put their best people to portray these icons because they're so yeah. important to the event. And I just thought that that was just a lot, a lot of fun. So well, I actually had us follow the, uh, the one that plays chance on Twitter. So, Oh, cool. Yeah. So yeah, I could see why this would, would be ranked higher for the diehards. I still thought it was a great house. Of course it's in my top five. So there you go. Right, like I said, like the only reason I think I flip flop is because I love Hill House so much. But like, uh, give me another day. It's like it's it at this point really like five, six through one or, or like so almost I mean, interchangeable. One stand yeah. out. Our number one is it was number one for the moment we got there, but um, it, but I mean, maybe like two through six I should say or pretty much could be somewhat interchangeable. Uh, next up for number three, uh, Brian and I flipped our number two, number three. So I had this at number three. Brian had it at number two. That was Revenge of the Tooth Fairy. Now, like we said before, this one was ranked a lot lower among people that had probably seen it last year because it's the same house. It was new to me. Uh, I'd never been into and there was There's been Tooth Fairy houses before I had never seen. Uh, so this one, I just love the story. I thought it was cool. Like the intro, you're going in, they're telling you this fairy tale, and you see these banners hanging from the ceiling, and there's a whole... It's almost like you're being told a bedtime story as you're walking into the house. I love that aspect. I love that. Oh my God. That was my, one of my, definitely my second favorite entry into a house. Yeah. The first one is good. The number one house, but the, um, yeah, it was just, I love the, ta- and you know, when the kid was like, you know, the, the, it was very theatrical. Like it was like a, almost like a movie where the, you know, the kid was like, yeah, I don't believe you. I don't believe in fairies. You can't, you know, it was like, yeah, the, it was really well done. Like it was professionally acted. Yeah. The audio sequence. in this house was really what made me rank it so high. The audio right, was right. stunning in this house. It was really good. It was crystal clear. You could tell what was going on. 
the uh, the design of the like evil tooth fairies I thought was really cool. They were they were pretty scary, and I thought like in terms I I, w- I, I can't say that I got any like genuine scares out of this house, but I felt like I could have. Like this was the house I felt like yeah. if I had not seen some telegraph plexiglass, I could have really got some good frights out of this one. And that's another reason why I ranked it so high. It just had a lot well, of opportunities. They, they- yeah, and they had very little little scare actors in this, um, you know, and they were there was you know short. Uh, I don't know if they were actually little people or they were just short, but they were they, that was kind of kind of almost like, like kind of defeated the plexiglass a little bit yeah. to where like they could and they were wearing masks so they could get closer to you. So and they were lower. And it's funny, I'm reading that book um, about or get uh, you know that scare actor, you know. Uh, Book, who we're gonna have uh, yeah. her on uh, the next show? She's um, in her in her book. She describes. She says one of the things is like there's a I guess one of her nieces is in there, and the people when it's it's someone smaller, it really is disorienting because it's at a lower point than you're used to looking down at, and so this the house that was repetitive. So I, you're right. I think this one would have had a chock full of scares if it wasn't you know to no fault of, of you know their own the, the little bit of telegraph where you could see the plexiglass hanging I mean, most of the time I think they did a good job trying to blend it in I mean they did their best and like you said earlier for Universal to pull this off even the close to a normal event as they did I mean they really should get like I mean, like, hats off. I mean, it's like, but yeah, and this one was great. It was just like, it, you know, it told the tale of like, you know, of what usually for kids is, is a, is a, like a wonderful tale, you know, yeah. oh, a tooth fairy, you're going to get money in here. And this is like the exact opposite, you know, yeah, it's like, I just love that and theme. The, the, tooth, the tooth fairy design was great. The, you know, the, the, the whole story just in general, like, I would love for this to be like almost like a movie, although it probably, terms of this tale it might be more fit for an anthology but either way it's just really cool i love the houses that tell a cool story and this one definitely might have done it better than any of them uh it's, it's really good although the next one which we're gonna go which is like flip flop and this was a tough one i actually before i did this list i had it in exactly your order but like i was just thinking back and i remember how much i loved the tooth fairy uh house walk through and i'm just like you know what no i had just i just had too much fun in that one there was too much too much uh of a of a, of a love for that house that i could I couldn't ignore it and so i had to move it up to two because remember back on the day there i'm like oh my god this is totally a number one number two house until we went to our number one house and then it was guaranteed it was going to be probably one and two for me yeah but i actually then when we went to this next one which i'll, I'll let you uh go into First, uh, this one was um, this one actually moved up to number two, and then three, and then two, and three. I, I just couldn't decide, so I just made the decision of, of putting Tooth Fairy at two where it was originally. <laughs> yeah, this one, this next one was probably the surprise of the whole event for me. That was Case Files, Unearthed, Legendary Truths, and this one was, I guess, loosely based, kind of had a sort of an X Files vibe to it. Had a little bit of like a uh, old detective uh, film noir type vibe to it. Uh, it, it kind of traveled through time. So like you start off in the nineties, it was obviously like an X files uh, reference, but then you kind of go back in time to the forties and you're walking through various cases that this detective was on. And that, that kind of reminded me of that anthology house. We went in um, that cinema one that we did yes, like in 2018 yes. where every room is kind of like a new case file like one of the murderous mannequins and it was full of mannequins and um there's one there he's like it was a really cool effect where he's fighting some kind of like lovecraftian tentacle monster and you just see the silhouette projected on the wall uh, i thought that was a really cool uh sequence yeah that that was that was one of my favorite sequences in that house um, actually the, the reason i place this one so high i think it's just because of the variety uh as much as i love tooth fairy and as consistent as it was i i love these anthology houses there that you're kind of getting a new kind of scare in every room and i love the idea of setting it into that time period which i love with the old detective crime stories i just i, I don't know i just i just love the whole concept of this house and it was very twisty and turny because I had to push Anna in through this one for the second time. And oh, this is the one you kept bumping into the wall. Yeah, this one was the tightest <laughs> house that I had to push yeah. her through in the wheelchair because she actually pushed her through the houses in the wheelchair, which I thought was awesome. But um, 
yeah, this one was very twisty and turny. Uh, very, they they made a lot. They put a packed a lot of house into a very small space. I guess is what yeah. I'm trying to say. It was very well designed in that way, and it was uh, it was so interesting to see this house through the night because I know Saturday night like, hardly ever had a wait, ever, and then Sunday night yeah. it would go from like. 10 minutes to like 70 minutes and then it would drop back to, it was crazy it was like this house was all over the map uh, i think it's because it's, it's it's nowhere near the like almost every other house has another house near it it's like almost the sets in twos or threes yes this was, this was by the house itself. this is that one yeah. by the shrek queue this is where a uh, halloween four was the last time yeah if you remember and it's kind of like off to the side and like in its own little section uh where there's no houses and they use that shrek queue to get into the to where the house is built but they um and the thing is is like with this one too there's like subtle touches that i noticed the second time more so is like the music playing and it was very very uh time period-esque through there and then that i love that thing when the when you walk through the lounge singer and she's singing oh that was like, cool yeah an actual lounge you know, singer up there neat. singing yeah that was... yeah and there was this one cool sequence where it was like you were in an alley and you were going back into the guy's office and they actually took the time to build this a full set of stairs going up that was just literally for the set piece yeah didn't go anything and i'm just like like look at the and like for some reason every time we went past it it just the both times it impressed me because i'm just like look at the detail they built just to have you know and i think that i heard like you know you hear a little dripping water like the ambient sound in this one was used to perfection i thought just between the music and the little sounds and the guy's voice you know with the narrate things that when he said it and it was just really like just cool if you're a fan of like those old noir crime thrillers oh my god this is this is the house for you because but they still managed to give it a, a good scare quality I mean, in terms of, you know, we didn't really get startled per se, but I was just, I think this one would have been hard to scare me only because I was enamored at so much of the detail of the houses. Yeah. You know, the house and the sections, I'm sorry, of the house, you know, so it was, it was just, yeah, this is a good one. Like I said, easily could fit two or three, this could flip flop on any given day. And I think it was just the more, the, the tooth fairy just got the edge due to, you know, the, the nostalgia, even, I mean, nostalgia sounds funny, right? Because we were just there, but you know what I mean? Like, that yeah. Just the, Something about the magic it captured for me, but uh, so that brings us to our number one house. Uh, this one was highly ranked from a lot of people uh, that you'll right. see, uh, including our, our not only just the bloggers and stuff, but our friends as well. Uh, the Wicked Growth Realm of the Pumpkin. Now you're gonna make a house about pumpkins. I'm all in because I'm such a sucker for you know you guys know me and Brian are sucker for pumpkin anything jack o' lanterns. Yeah. I mean that's to me like how you you throw a you know, 10 jack-o'-lanterns together. And I'm like, I'll sit there all night and gaze at it. I'm just like enamored yeah. by bunches of jack-o'-lanterns for some reason. They just completely enthrall me. This had the coolest opening of any house oh I've ever God, seen. Yeah. They had a huge tunnel. Uh, so imagine like two giant totem poles of nothing but jack-o'-lanterns. And then you, you could see it. I posted the picture of it. Yeah. So you could see the, um, you could see the open. Go take a look. Instagram. Then you got this big tunnel, like a, like a arboretum or whatever you call it, but like the big arbor of, of just nothing but vines and pumpkins as you're walking into this house. And it, it was just such a cool, like I could have stared at it. I, I could have ranked this number one, just based off the, the outside of the house going into it. It right. was that cool looking. And at night it looked, I mean, oh, it was, you saw it in the light, but, but at nighttime when it's all glowing, oh, it was oh amazing. My God. Yeah. It's like, you're literally walking into a, the the physical embodiment of of Halloween, the holiday, yeah. of Halloween, <laughs> and then you go in and there's just such a cool story to this one. I mean, there's there was a there, I think there's one point there's a witch that's in there. Yeah. Um. There's a at the end there's this fantastic sequence with like this pumpkin lord looking creature. I mean everything in this house just screams Halloween. The spirit does, of Halloween. Yeah. Um. I mean almost more than the trick or treat house did when we went because this one was not even a this is an original one this is not even based off an ip so everything in it was just tailor custom made to just push jack-o'-lanterns and pumpkins i mean i think they even pumped some pumpkin smell into the house it was yeah. it was amazing and there was that cool thing when you walked over the, the covered bridge oh and you could look yeah down below you could look over the bridge under your feet like they didn't spare one uh you know missing piece of a detail it's like Literally, you felt like you were walking over a covered bridge, 
in the middle of it, and it and it, yeah, it's just um, there was just just so many like like little little touches to this that like you just didn't want to like you didn't want to leave. It's almost like if you've been to the, the where they've had the the scare zone of it of this kind of a thing, just picture it, but way more encompassing because now you're just, like literally right next to you, you know, and it's like you you you've gotten into a, a world of like. Uh, of of Halloween, you yeah, know? and it's like I mean, if there's any house that like it probably out of all this may be one of my favorite houses of all time in any kind of haunt, just because of its if it's of the way they did it, it was just so so. Cool. I'm really looking forward to going back and watching the walkthroughs of these houses now that I don't I have know, to be now spoiled, that we've seen yeah, it. Now, yeah, because I could I feel like I could like pick out things that I didn't notice before, like go through the Bride of Frankenstein house again now, see it in video yeah. and kind of see oh. Well, I yeah you know, totally miss. It. I, I specifically did not do that before we did this ranking because I did not want that to color my right. rankings, uh, which is not really fair. I wanted to give my real honest impressions, but yeah, Wicked Growth no, by far my number one. That was my that was my favorite house. And this one, at least we got to do twice because <laughs> we knew right away after we went in that first night. We're like, okay, this is yeah, we're going it. back. Uh, and I'm glad Olivia got to see that one too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's go through our scare zone rankings. This one, this one actually was very easy for me because I only felt like there was only two scare zones that actually impressed me. Uh, the other three were just interchangeable. I thought they were fairly generic. I mean, they were fun. I mean, you got scare actors yeah. walking around, but uh, there was only two that actually impressed me. Um, so I guess we'll go th- through these in- and we had the exact same ranking. It's kind of fun. Yeah. I, like, well, it. honestly, I just put the exact same ranking for my bottom three because I don't care. Like none of these bottom yeah. three impressed me whatsoever. Uh, so at number five, I had 30 years, 30 fears. That was the one that had, um, I don't even remember what I, I can't even tell you the difference between 30 years, 30 fears and the lights, cameras, action one. Honestly, I, I think there, it just had a lot of like, like it had all the posters of like the, the artwork. Of all yeah. The different they always have that scares and it's basically just posters and stuff. So that one, Oh, I remember that one. Cause it, I think it had like some women in cages or something or like some kind yeah, of, yeah. And it, ha- it had some like just scare actors walking around at you, you know, it was like, generic scare zone. Yeah. Um, the light cameras action action one was actually a little better. That one was, um, cause you did have a, like some icon characters that were walking around. You had some, uh, that's where we got Jack attacked. Yeah, we, remember they, yeah, um, we got saw we saw Jack, we saw Eddie, we saw. Um, there's a really funny guy that would kept posing for us, and then before we could take the picture, he'd like run off. <laughs> yeah, we finally got him. We though. finally got him. Um, so yeah, I mean that was that one. I don't know. I guess I could rank it above Gorewood, maybe, um, just for the the scare actors. But uh, yeah, again, it, not a lot of theme there it was basically just more a street with scare actors walking around yeah um yeah i mean and you know it's yeah it, it, and it, though what i li- did like about it is because it's like that i like that area of the scare zone like more than i the scare because it, it seemed very similar the way that scare zone operated like it did the first time we went when it was the, the chucky scare yeah zone yeah it did feel very similar yeah uh, the next one up on number three, we had Gorewood Forest. This is where the old pumpkin one uh, scare zone was when we went. And this yeah. is this one was more that, uh, what's her name? Cru, uh, Tara. Tara Cruentis. Cruentis, yeah. yeah. She was the like the evil forest queen or whatever she is. Uh, this one, uh, not as not not to me as impressive as when they had the pumpkin one there um, that me and Brian went through. It, it's more of a... More of like a forest without the pumpkins, uh, honestly. You had some of the cool like guys with the spiky leg things coming out of the little burrows to the side, which is kind of cool. But um, again, it, it still felt like a fairly generic scare zone. Um, number two, Crypt TV. This one was a surprise because I had not seen any of the Crypt TV um, shorts or anything. And I do have a plan to go to go check those out because they have some really, really cool creatures. And the thing I liked about the scare zone is you didn't, you, it was almost like a sideshow. Like every creature had its own little stage and they were up there and they would sometimes perform little shows, but more or less they were just kind of walking around and taunting the crowd. But I kind of like that. I, I like that you could see everything. Uh, it wasn't that you were, you know, the, I, I like the ones where they're walking around for the interactivity, 
But I also kind of like this one because you could like go check out each one and take pictures or whatever and like not be not have to like try to run into them or something. You know what I mean? Like, it, well, yeah, and I think they did that intentionally because that's a very crowded area. It seems like it's a very thin walkway to begin with on a normal day. Have you noticed every time we walk through there during even park hours, but not Halloween Horror Nights for some reason, it con- it conglomerates. There yeah, because they, you know it's not. It's, you're almost at the the part where it's like you know that fast and furious kind of gets out there's the jaws is off to the side there's the food places right there and you're about to get into the you know the the london waterfront area there for the uh you know for to get into diagon alley so there's a lot of like stuff right in that little area and i think it's a it's like a tight squeeze to begin with so i think at least they worked that scare zone well for that reason by putting a lot of stuff like more on stage than in the thing because if you looked there weren't a lot of people roaming the streets in that spot, no at least no. when we were there but I, I really liked the character designs for some of these i thought they were cool i can't wait to like like it really it did its job in making me want to go watch the crypt tv stuff because i was like yeah. oh that character looks neat like i want to find out more so i want to go watch what well, did you get to did you get to see the decapitated head sequence that they do where no. the guy like pulls the guy's head no, off I... you could see it i saw it um who po- oh i think amanda uh you know uh, living dead girl she posted i think uh, a little video on her instagram about it um where she shows it and like i remember julie and i were watching it because we were eating nearby there at one point and when we were waiting for you guys so you could or we were i think we were waiting for the food so we could kind of see it where we were, and it was like they like they do this whole effect where they pull this guy pulls his head off of the, uh, the, the the mannequin kind of body. But it was yeah, it was it was definitely a neat one visually for like you know the ones you want to stop and watch little sideshow things. Yeah, and our number one by far, I mean by oh, far, yeah. was Seek and Destroy. I would have never believed this one because I like I said I don't really like alien stuff. I don't in terms of I like it. I like it by itself. I don't like it in terms of Halloween. Right. Uh, I always thought, uh, don't like, don't get sci-fi in my horror, really. Um, but this one was an amazing scare zone. You had so much interactivity, so many scare actors. Uh, the whole plot of this is that aliens have come down and they're basically telling humans to submit or be fried. <laughs> I guess electrocuted yeah. or whatever, and so yeah, I think yeah, I think your kids have been been with, were uh, sucked into this several times. So you know you may want to check them every so often. Yeah, so sure they're still not. They had a uh, alien. They had a stage with like an alien queen, and she would like they would grab people out of the street and be like, and like "We all got pulled." Yeah, up, we right? yeah we, we all, all got pulled up, yeah. to, and you're asked to either submit or not. I don't know exactly what happens if you don't submit. I know Brian and I just immediately pledged allegiance to our yeah. alien overlords because we did not want to be fried, uh, which they... Yeah. We had things to do. Yeah. We didn't want to... <laughs> yeah, so they let us go. go. But um, you had, like, the the people on stilts walking around, like, scanning people with these laser guns. Um, all those characters were super cool to the kids. I just love that. I thought they were... They just were so yeah, they, accommodating and awesome. Yeah, they kept going to them. They posed with them for pictures without a problem. And they really, like... You could just tell. They were, they were always fist-bumping Joshua, all of them. You know, it was, like, really cool. They had they um, did such a good job. They had people running around that were, like, human survivors going, Get out of here! You gotta get out of oh, here! Yeah. They were, like, their hair all messed up. And they're, like, running past you and stuff. I thought it was pretty funny. And me and Joshua were sitting on the street one night. One... Uh, at some point one afternoon and uh, waiting on something and uh he come he came running by and he's like screaming you gotta get out of here like what are you doing just sitting there <laughs> it was funny so yeah this was yeah I, but awesome like you i zone. never would have put that at number one going in no no uh, awesome awesome scare zone so uh that, that, that brings us to the last thing which is the show we 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 did not see the uh halloween nightmare fuel it wasn't not necessarily because I didn't want to see it. I, I would have definitely sat down and watched it, but just with the timing and everything, we just never, yeah. never really had the opportunity to be back there at that time. And it wasn't high enough on our list to really make a conscientious effort to go see it. But we, I mean, I heard it was great from people, you know, and it's got a lot of music, a lot of, uh, lot, you know, a lot of acrobatics, but I feel like it's still the same as a, that other show we saw. Yeah. And so, you know, it, but, and, you know, and I heard there were some, like, I did see one review that there was a lot of like, like sexual innuendo elements in there. Yes. And I, you know, I, so I kind of heard that and I told, I warned him a little, I'm like, me, you know, Might be not maybe be. we should just skip yeah. it. You know? Yeah. I, I kind of felt good with that decision because I didn't necessarily want to expose the kids to that. So we, uh, instead opted for the lagoon show. And this is one of the, um, 
one of the times where Anna being in a wheelchair really helped us out because as we were going in to kind of try to find a good spot to watch this, uh, the guy saw that uh, Anna was in the wheelchair and immediately wheeled her up to like this high terrace where we could see the the whole show over everybody's head. And yeah, no one was around us yeah, either. No, we were like in our own. Yeah, section. we had like a, all like a front row seats, dead center to the fountains and everything. It was in phenomenal. This show blew me away. I mean, if you told yeah. me, "Hey, Tim, this this they're going to project horror scenes on a fountain," I'm like, "Okay, whatever." I've seen that a billion yeah. times at every theme park. They they project stuff on the side of water. Ooh, big deal. But the way they did it with they did projection mapping on the back buildings behind it. They had the horror film scenes being shown. They have music. They have lasers. Um, it just all comes together. It's like super intense. Like it's very like heavy metal. Like uh, it just was, it was just cool. I don't know how to describe it. It was just super, super cool. It was like, it was like just getting blasted with everything horror and craziness yeah. all at one time. I, I don't know what you thought about it, Brian. I thought it was just, Oh no, I loved it. It was definitely, I mean, still my favorite, that type of show is still probably going to be, I mean, you know, it's like Fantasmic at Disneyland and, um, you know, World of Colors up there. But this is like still, I think, uh, Fantasmic is different because it uses like, you know, a lot of other elements like boats yeah, and live yeah. action people on it. But in terms of just the lagoon element and the projection on water, it's more closer to World of Color. Um, but I think it's, it might beat World of Color for me, just the drop. I mean, maybe it's the horror element of it or maybe it's just because... I think I didn't expect it to be so elaborate. And what's funny is we, you know, we were around the park when that show was going on. We were at the other end of the lagoon, and I felt like you barely heard it or saw it. Yeah, which was amazing. That's how, like the way their speakers must be planted in in the in the the right areas and the way they control that. It's like because when you were there, I'm like, how did we not hear this everywhere in Florida? Let alone just <laughs> I like, know it was so loud know, in the park. Yeah, but. It was yeah, it was so cool. We didn't know it was going to project in the building because I think we were by a building once. We were walking through when yeah. it projected on there. I was like, oh, look at that. But um, yeah, it was just really cool. I mean, like the plot is a little confusing. I guess they're just in some kind of like it's almost like it looks like they're in some kind of warehouse. I guess yeah. So and, it was like almost like Jack is like trying to like scare you or like blast you with fears yeah. and something. They were, but like there was like a whole sequence of Texas Chainsaw. Where they're like projecting yeah. Leatherface on the side of fountains and they're playing the, the Texas Chainsaw music. I mean, it was just so so cool. If you're a horror fan, yeah. To see oh yeah, that. no. It, this is one to definitely not miss. And you know, I think there's like three or four showings of it a night, so you could easily just, you know, just go do it. And I, I definitely say where we went would be the area to try and find a spot, which was kind of right outside, right after that Terra Cuenta scare zone. Yeah, just kind of you'll see like there's actually a sign I think says where the viewing area for it is, so you can kind of go in there. I mean I don't know if it's something you need to necessarily get there like an hour. Like Fantasmic at Disneyland, people literally wait lines like sometimes three hours just sitting there before the show doing nothing else but waiting for the show to start. Like I don't think you need to do that here because it's so big in scope that you could probably see it from anywhere. And they have like, so many in shows area. a night. Yeah. Yeah, so I yeah I would, but it's definitely one not to miss. I would definitely see you know if you're going there, it gets. I mean, like I said, we, you know, we voluntarily skipped the other one. We probably like if we did, you know, we had time. We probably would have watched it, but you know, with the kids, I like I don't feel like I, you know, I I know it's a, uh, you know, really cool acrobatic music show, but to me, it's like I'm um, you know I don't know those shows to me kind of I, I maybe i'm just jaded but they all kind of blend in a little bit yeah. to me i feel bad i, I think we picked the right i worked show. really hard to make yeah. it good but <laughs> yeah i think we picked the right one to to definitely seek out but um yeah. i guess that's i mean i guess that's pretty much it that's the that's the wrap yeah. up that's our rankings um we uh we're at two hour mark so we're uh my voice is shot anyway but yeah no i'm almost gone oh uh, <laughs> yeah i know we you guys have had a Pretty big break from us. Uh, it's been a big break for us as well, but we have a ton of content coming your way. Uh, we've got several things we're recording this week uh, uh, that you will be able to hear shortly. Uh, stuff in preparation for our 200th episode and a uh, fantastic interview coming up. So we got other stuff. Dismemberment of might be two parts. Yeah, dismemberment <laughs> is so big. We, we're actually going to have to split it into two, I think. Um, so yeah, we got tons of stuff coming your way. So, uh, appreciate your patience as we kind of took this little extended break before haunt season, but I think it'll be worth it because it's allowed us to, 
uh, you know, kind of prepped this uh, uh, some re- re- really really cool stuff, and, and I've seen I've seen the first draft of the <laughs> the twenty twenty one horror movie challenge, and you guys are in for a uh, a a true challenge this year. It is truly diabolical. Yeah, and you may already have seen it by the time this episode releases because we're going to try and get it out like a week ahead of time just so people can plan for it because it's, there's definitely some new elements we've added this year that have not been in previous elements, Yeah, uh, which I think will make it a uh, little bit more challenging where you have to really, really like be strategic, I think, more so than ever this year. But it's a challenge, right? It's not, a, right. It's not uh, supposed to be easy, especially after five years. Gift. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. So we will see you back here soon. I hope you enjoyed this uh, this recap of Halloween Horror Nights. If you do have the means and have a chance, definitely get down there and and yeah. see this wonderful event. It's truly the best Halloween event in the country, uh, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, yes. uh, definitely, definitely a great time and a great seeing Brian and Julie again after a long extended. Yes, uh, way too long yeah, uh, of, a, uh, of, a, of an absence. Absence there, yeah, but uh, it was it was a blast, and although I'm glad to be home, it was it was a lot, it was a lot of walking. We were all yeah. very tired, but it was uh, it was well well worth it. Oh yeah, no my my legs probably just started to recover, like I'd say over the weekend. That's how yeah, like it was, it was like, took, like three full <laughs> days afterwards. I was like, I mean, I had blisters on my feet and my like my. The calves were like still sore and tight and my back and neck and oh god it was just but it was it was it was worth every every uh moment of pain yeah. because it was such a fun event <laughs> all right guys so we'll see you back here soon see you later